all committee members working with high enthusiasm to deliver an enjoyable experience of attending this online international conference. I hope this event can continue and be convened at better times. We hope you return then with even more colleagues. Enjoy the conference. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you very much for our head of committee, Mr. Patriot Mughmin. The, the next opening remark will be given by the head of aesthetic study group, Dr. Irma Damayanti. Please welcome Dr. Irma Damayanti. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable Rector of ITB and Representatives, the Dean, Vice Dean, and Member of Faculty of Visual Art and Design ITB, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to our virtual 2020 International Conference on Aesthetics and the Sciences of Art. I would like to start by wishing you and your families my personal best for your health and safety in these difficult times. It is both a privilege and an honor to welcome you to the International Conference on Aesthetics and the Sciences of Art, or AC Art, in Bandung, Indonesia. On behalf of the Aesthetics and Sciences of Art Research Group, ITB, which focuses on area that encompasses theoretical, historical, and interdisciplinary art studies, I would like to extend my heartfelt welcome. We are delighted to have Thank you very much for the head of aesthetic study group, Dr. Irma Damayanti. The next opening remark will be given by the Dean of Faculty of Arts and Design, Dr. Rick Rick Kusmara. Dr. Rick Rick Kusmara, please. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera untuk kita semua. Good morning, Honorable Rector of ITB, speakers, moderators, colleagues, students, and participants. On behalf of Faculty of Art and Design, I would like to welcome you all for joining this morning at the International Conference Indonesian Art and Visual Culture of the 20th Century. This event was originally part of the series event for the 100 years anniversary of the Indonesian Technical Higher Education, which is now Bandung Institute of Technology. Through this 100 years moment, the Faculty of Art and Design, ITB, is committed to continuing to be an active part of the exchange knowledge with various national and international institutions. One of them, by continuing to intensify cooperation between universities, 
organize seminars like today. Today's seminar was initially planned to be held around last July to August 2020 by inviting speakers to ITB. But rest Thank you very much for the Dean of Faculty of Arts and Design, Dr. Rekri Kusmara. The next opening remark and the official commencement will be given by the Rector of ITB herself, Professor Reni Wirahadi Kusuma. Please welcome Professor Reni Wirahadi Kusuma. Dear colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Institute Technology Bandung, it is my honor and pleasure to welcome all of you to the International Conference on Aesthetic and the Sciences of Art. Uh, since the wake of the 21st century, uh, we have experienced rapid transformations in science, technology and culture. We are currently uh, facing the unfathomable uh, COVID-19 pandemic that has created massive impacts, both economically and socially. Amidst the earth adversities, Institute Technology Bandung celebrates its first centennial. ITB is an adaptive learning organization. In our 100-year journey, ITB has a long standing as the leader in advancing science, technology, art, and social and humanities as well. Uh, the alumni are ITB's pride, including the many esteemed artists and creative talents who continue to share our value and significant contribution to Indonesian development and our international networks. To continue our tradition, ITB will always preserve a campus with academic atmosphere that is open to new ideas and experiences, critical and visionary thoughts, accompanied by attitudes that uphold academic freedom in scientific and cultural diversity. To create impactful transformations, we need strong foundations Collaboration, academic freedom, and collective learning are the keys in the future of higher education. Additionally, with the pandemic, we are facing a new challenge that requires us to increase solidarity in moral and virtue on national and global level. This cannot be done if we are unable to empathize and create a better ecosystem of innovation. Our has always offered a way to increase empathy due to its subjective nature. Also in art activities, we learn to see and understand a phenomenon or object from multiple point of views. Complex thinking and connectivity are at the core of its approach to life. Therefore, it is a priority to keep on developing and supporting the studies of art both in research and practices. This conference brings forward the urgency to retrospect on what has happened within the first 20 years of the century in art and visual culture. Its utmost importance lies on the needs to be able to retrace and reinterpret past phenomena to create a better foundation and trajectory for the future. We are also welcoming our international speakers, Professor Adrian Vickers, Professor Ushiro Soji Masahiro, and Professor CJ Hui Wanling, who I believe will deliver a world-class presentation on their studies of Indonesian art and visual culture. Their contribution to the studies are unparalleled. Finally, 
I would like to extend my appreciation to the organizing committee of the Faculty of Art and Design. I wish you all an inspiring and joyful conference. I hope to see you all again in a very much better circumstance at the next International Conference on Aesthetic and the Sciences of Art. Please stay healthy and happy. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to Professor Raini Wirahadi Kusuma for the opening remarks. Now we have arrived at the first lecture of the conference. It is an honor for me to give an introduction about our beloved teacher, Dr. Yustiono. Dr. Yustiono is Associate Professor of Aesthetics and the Sciences of Art Research Group, Faculty of Art and Design, Institute Technology, Bandung. His research focuses on Indonesian modern art history and Islamic studies. He will present the keynote lecture titled Art, Artist, and Culture in the 21st Century Indonesian Contemporary Art. para hadirin peserta pembicara panitia yang saya hormati Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh pada kesempatan ini saya akan menyampaikan ceramah keynote eh, yang akan saya bacakan dan berjudul seni seniman dan kebudayaan pada seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia abad ke-21. Seni, seniman, dan kebudayaan dalam seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia abad ke-21 bukanlah entitas yang berdiri sendiri. Ia bagian dari daya-daya modernitas dan pasca modernitas yang berasal dari Barat. Pencetan ini lebih jelas sekarang ketika seni rupa kontemporer praktis telah terintegrasi secara internasional. Serupa kontemporer nampak sebagai salah satu bentuk budaya kosmopolit dunia, jika bukan satu-satunya. Karakteristik internasional itu disatukan oleh dasar kapitalisme internasional, media baru, tradisi bienal, art fair, balai lelang, peran kurator, art dealer, kolektor, dan juga komodifikasi seni dan terbentuknya medan seni atau art world yang terintegrasi secara global. Hal ini bukan berarti modernitas dan pasca modernitas di setiap negara ada benua sama. Ada modernitas-modernitas dan juga pasca modernitas-pasca modernitas di tiap negara. Terdapat keragaman dalam manifestasinya. Menghubungkan kenyataan serupa kontemporer Indonesia abad 21 dengan modernitas dan pasca modernitas berarti melibatkan waktu sekitar tiga abad. Ini mungkin nampak keterlaluan. Tetapi dalam ceramah ini, saya berusaha membuat penyederhanaan tanpa mengurangi substansi. Pertama-tama, saya ingin menunjukkan ada ciri yang sama dari kemunculan konsepsi seni di masa modernitas dan pasca, modern, pasca modernitas. Keduanya memaklumkan, memaklumkan kematian seni. Pada masa modernitas, manifesto kematian seni dikumandangkan oleh Hegel di awal abad 19. Katanya, seni modern adalah seni yang lain, dirancang untuk tujuan lain dan diisi dengan arti yang lain, yaitu seni estetik, seni otonom yang tidak lagi tunduk pada apa yang di luar dirinya, termasuk moralitas, agama, ekonomi, maupun politik kecuali dirinya, yaitu seni untuk seni. Maka kata seni dan seniman ditemukan 
seni yang selalu menuju kemajuan atau progres, universal, dan pewaris seni tinggi atau fine arts dalam tradisi barat. Sebaliknya seni pra modern adalah seni pra estetik karena bercampur dengan agama, dengan moralitas maupun dengan ritual. Seni modern adalah seni yang sadar diri. Ia menemukan dirinya sebagai bagian dari proses diferensiasi modernitas karena selain menemukan seni dan seniman, modernitas juga membebaskan ilmu dan ilmuwan serta moralitas dan hukum. untuk berkembang secara mandiri, terspesialisasi, dan lepas dari kungungan otoritas di luar dirinya, termasuk gereja. Sementara itu, manifesto matinya seni pada masa pasca modernitas dilakukan oleh Arthur Danto, yang juga sekaligus memaklumkan lahirnya seni rupa kontemporer. Tentu yang dimaksud dengan kematian seni, kali ini adalah matinya seni modern, seni estetik. Secara logis, pandangan dunia pasar modernitas yang anti fondasi, anti esensi, dan anti substansi sejak kemulan, kemunculannya berupaya mendekonstruksi konsepsi seni yang mengklaim berpijak pada esensi estetik para hadirin yang terhormat. Proyek dekonstruksi pasar modernisme setidaknya menyasar tiga wilayah. Pertama, wilayah kultural, yaitu wilayah nilai-nilai dan norma-norma seni. Dengan mengarus utamakan wacana-wacana seperti anti-estetik, anti-seni, matinya seni, matinya seniman, anti-progres, anti-avant-garde, anti-modernisme, anti-kebaruan, anti-originalitas, anti-universalisme. Hilangnya batas antara seni tinggi dan seni rendah, feminisme, identitas etnik populisme, postkolonialisme, kebetulan pada masalah lingkungan dan sosial, hingga anything goes, termasuk narsisme dan nihilisme. Sedangkan wilayah kedua, wilayah sosial kelembagaan, menghadirkan suatu medan seni yang memungkinkan sirkulasi karya seni non-estetik melalui argumen filosofis berupa teori seni sebagai institusi yang dikenalkan oleh Arthur Danto dan George Dickey. Perlemahan peran institusi pendidikan seni, museum, dan kritikus dan menggantikannya dengan peran kurator independen sebagai agen yang menafsirkan, memaknakan, menyeleksi, mengkomunikasikan, dan memamerkan karya seni. Sedang di wilayah estetik, yang ketiga, mengembangkan teori estetik anything goes, seperti pastis, sisoprenia, seni konseptual, dan pengarusan medium seperti seni performance, instalasi, video, fotografi, film, multimedia, media baru, digital art, hingga internet art. Sekarang saya sampai pada satu pembahasan tentang Bagaimanakah gambaran aktual kondisi seni, seniman, dan kebudayaan ketika gelombang modernitas dan pasca modernitas melanda Indonesia? Pengenalan, pempraktikan, dan penghayatan konsepsi seni estetik telah dialami pada periode cukup dini oleh salah seorang kelahiran Jawa, Raden Saleh, yang belajar seni dari 1830, sampai 1839 di Belanda, ketika Indonesia masih bernama India Belanda. Dari 1840, Raden Saleh mengembara ke Eropa, terutama di Jerman selama beberapa tahun, Perancis, Inggris, dan hingga 1851 mendapat pengakuan sebagai seorang seniman elit terpandang di Eropa dengan beragam penghargaan. Periode 1830-1850, iklim budaya Eropa masih berada di bawah bayang-bayang gaya romantisme akhir. Periode itu juga menyaksikan penyebaran revolusi industri, kapitalisme, kolonialisme, nasionalisme, demokrasi, dan juga liberalisme, di samping kolonialisme dan imperialisme. Di sini, kreasi artistik adalah pembebasan emosi dan seni menjadi wahana pengetahuan dan saingan ilmu. Pada titik ini, kaum romantisis berupaya menaikkan tingkat kesadaran seni melampaui pencapaian kesadaran rasional ilmiah dari sains 
melalui pelibatan pengetahuan transendental mistis. Istilah-istilah seperti eksentrik, jenius, dan sublim yang muncul pada budaya romantisis hendaknya dipahami dalam konotasi aura transendentalisme. Budaya romantik adalah budaya perlawanan terhadap dominasi rasionalisme industrial kaum penyerahan. Romantisme menekankan dunia noumena dalam pengertian kan, yaitu things in themselves, sebagai lawan dari dunia fenomena yang empiris sebagai objek sains. Seniman bersama kaum mistik dianggap sebagai alat memperoleh sumber vital pencapaian jenis pengetahuan yang tidak didapatkan dari ilmu. Romantisisme merupakan akar penting seni modern, tapi era modern dalam seni baru muncul pada 1870, diawali gerakan seni impresionisme dan didalui oleh realisme, yang nantinya menjadi jenis seni Marxis yang mendasari gerakan seni realisme sosialis di Uni Soviet abad 20. Manifestasi keempat gelombang modernitas pada medan seni berevolusi di tengah tatanan medan seni kolonial. Pada dekade ketiga abad 20, yaitu 1930-an, kata seni ditemukan sebagai kata terjemahan dari kunst bahasa Belanda atau art bahasa Inggris, atau fine art. Pada tahun 1933, lahir penjaga baru. Sultan Takdir Ali Sahbana menggulirkan peristiwa polemik kebudayaan 1935. Bingke-bingke perdebatan itu memakai sudut pandang budaya timur barat. STA mempromosikan roh budaya barat yang progresif bagi ganti roh budaya timur yang pasif. Roh budaya barat yang terdiri dari individualisme, rasionalisme, dan materialisme, kata STA, terbukti lebih unggul dari roh budaya timur yang berdasar, yang berdasar pada kolektivisme, tengang rasa atau intuisi, dan spiritualisme. Nampak bahwa konsepsi individualisme, rasionalisme, dan materialisme merupakan versi yang lebih kuno dari konsepsi modernitas pencerahan yang terdiri dari ilmu yang objektif, moralitas dan hukum universal, dan seni yang otonom. Kelahiran Persagi pada 1938 menghadirkan sosok Sudoyono yang menonjol. Seperti halnya sosok Soekarno yang berkepribadian kompleks atau menginternalisasi keempat gelombang modernitas modernisme, nasionalisme, sosialisme, dan Islam modernis pada dirinya, Sujoyono menampakkan kecerungan modernisme, sosialisme, dan nasionalisme sekaligus pada saat yang sama. Tahun pendidikan Pesagi 38 sering dinyatakan, terutama oleh penulis dan kritikus tahun 1950-an, seperti Tresno Sumarjo, Balfas, Basuki Resubowo, dan diikuti oleh penulis berikutnya termasuk Claire Holt sebagai tahun kelahiran seni rupa modern Indonesia. Tetapi dari perspektif yang lebih panjang, kelahiran seni modern rupa modern Indonesia lebih cepat terjadi pada tahun 1946-1949. Masa ketika seluruh potensi dari sumber daya seniman Indonesia tumpah menyetangkan diri dan berkreasi dengan tema yang sama, mempertahankan kemerdekaan dari penjajahan yang berupaya kembali merenggut kemerdekaan yang telah diraih. Periode ini merupakan manifestasi avant-garde heroik dan sebagai gerakan seni dapat disebut sebagai realisme nasionalis. Dan sebagai gerakan seni, ini berarti bahwa seperti halnya kemerdekaan Indonesia, kelahiran serupa modern Indonesia juga dilandasi oleh semangat nasionalisme, meskipun ia meliputkan gelombang-gelombang modernisme, sosialisme, dan Islam modernis yang masing-masing menunjukkan eksistensinya di medan budaya nasional. Memasuki periode 1950-1965, keempat gelombang modernitas berkontestasi dengan tajam dan keras untuk memperebutkan ruang medan budaya di Republik yang masih sangat muda. Perbenturan, perdebatan, dan gesekan keras tidak terhindarkan. Terutama karena kubu Lekra yang keberadaannya tidak lepas dari PKI sering menggunakan kuasa politik untuk menindas kubu lawannya, kubu modernisme. Dipicu oleh perbenturan dua kubu, muncul kubu ketiga dan keempat kubu nasionalis dan kubu Islam modernis yang menata diri, merupakan sikap dan pandangan seni yang berbeda dari kedua kubu lainnya. Gambaran posisi masing-masing dengan jelas dapat dilihat perbedaannya. Pertama, seni modernisme. Ia meyakini seni adalah otonom. 
tujuan seni adalah meningkatkan nilai estetik terus-menerus. Seni adalah bentuk yang berarti atau formalisme. Seni harus selalu maju, menjaga nilai dan norma seni yang penting berupa kebaruan, keaslian, dan kreativitas. Seni bersifat universal dan dibedakan antara seni tinggi dan seni rendah atau kids. Seniman adalah individu kreatif yang selalu melakukan pembaruan dan inovasi bentuk. Seni modernisme ini paling mengakar dan tumbuh dari masa kolonial abad 20. Dan gerakan sastra penjaga baru, termasuk sastra angkatan 45, termasuk inisiator seni modern di Indonesia. Di bidang seni rupa, ia terutama tumbuh dan berkembang di perguruan tinggi seni, terutama ITB, seni ITB, dan muncul di medan seni pada 1954 sebagai avant-garde pemurni. Kubu modernis pada saat itu menghadapi represi sengit dari kubu sosialis. Kedua, kutub sosialisme mengangkat teori seni realisme sosialis, yaitu teori estika instrumentalis yang dirumuskan Uni Soviet pada tahun 1930-an. Ini pengembangan lebih lanjut dari teori Marxis yang memandang seni adalah refleksi dari realitas dan seni berfungsi sebagai alat perubahan. Tentu, realitas yang dimaksud adalah realitas pertengahan kelas dan seni menjadi alat penyadaran bagi kalangan proletar yang tertindas. Apabila gerak penyadaran telah berhasil dan meluas, maka tiba saatnya langkah revolusioner berupa gerakan pembebasan dan pemerdekaan. Kata kunci penyadaran, pembebasan, dan pemerdekaan adalah semboyan khas kaum Marxis. Seniman adalah mereka yang terpanggil untuk melakukan fungsi-fungsi penyadaran dan pembebasan. Dengan kata lain, seni realisme sosial adalah seni untuk rakyat. Ia mementingkan isi, bukan bentuk estetik. Di Indonesia, penggerak seni realisme sosialis adalah Lekra, suatu lembaga kebudayaan bentukan PKI yang berdiri di tahun 1950. berhasil melibatkan tokoh-tokoh seniman terkemuka pada zamannya seperti Pramudia Anantatur, Sujono, Avandi, dan Indra Gunawan. Ketiga, kutub nasionalisme. Berpandangan bahwa seni hendaknya berkomitmen mengekspresikan kepribadian bangsa atau jati diri bangsa. Kesadaran semangat ini menjadi wacana yang terus-menerus muncul dalam perdebatan di tingkat nasional. Idealisasi seni kebesaran itu telah terwujud pada kemunculan seni realisme nasionalis tahun 46-49, meskipun kecanan itu belum disadari. Pada perwujudan lain, para seniman, terutama dari perguruan tinggi seni asli Jogja yang didirikan tahun 1950, menasirkan arti kepribadian nasional melalui hasil puncak-puncak di daerah. Seni modern menyerap beragam unsur kedaerahan dan melahirkan gaya seni dekoratifisme Jogja. Kutub keempat, kutub seni Islam modernis. Terbentuk terutama karena provokasi intensif kontestasi kultural periode 1950-1965. Melalui manifest kebudayaan dan kesenian Islam tahun 1963, Mereka menolak konsepsi seni untuk seni dan seni untuk rakyat. Seni Islam dipahami sebagai seni karena Allah untuk umat manusia. Jadi ada gerak ke atas, transenden, diseimbangan dengan gerak horizontal kemanusiaan. Para seniman Islam modernis tergabung dalam organisasi HSBI dan Lesbumi di bawah naungan NU. Dalam seni rupa, manifestasinya baru terbentuk pasca 1965, melalui jejaring yang merangkai potensi seniman muslim dari Bandung, Yogyakarta, Surabaya, dan Jakarta. Teori estika seni Islam modernis, sebagaimana dikembangkan oleh salah satu tokohnya Ahmad Sadali, berpijak pada konsep jigir dan taskiyah atau penyucian. Bahwa seni bertujuan menyucikan manusia pada tingkat personal, sosial, maupun peradaban. Kosep ini berkesuaian dengan asas penjenjangan realitas dari materi, tubuh, pikiran, jiwa, dan roh. Meskipun berbeda, induk dari keseluruhan keempat gelombang itu adalah modernitas. Seni diyakini memiliki entitas estetik dengan penafsiran yang berbeda, yaitu realisasi dorongan individual personal, pembebasan sosial, identifikasi kebangsaan, dan pendakian kesadaran ketuhanan untuk kemasyaratan umat manusia. Memasuki periode 1975, muncul gelombang yang berbeda, yaitu gelombang pasca modernitas. Wacana pasca modernitas baru diperbincangkan di Indonesia pada peristiwa Bienal Jakarta 9 tahun 
tapi kecenderungan seninya sudah dapat dilihat dari fenomena gerakan serupa baru 1975. Hal yang sama juga terjadi pada sejarah seni rupa modern barat yang menarik ke belakang seni pasca modernisme hingga gerakan pop, neodada, seni konsatual pada pertengahan 1950-an. Meskipun perbincangan isu postmodernisme baru muncul pada pertengahan 1970-an. Karatik seni pop memang sejalan dengan pasca modernitas. Orientasinya terutama pada budaya populer, budaya sehari-hari yang dangkal, yang material. Apropriasi ikon-ikon populer seperti bintang film, komik strip, makanan dan minuman cepat saji, hingga kotak sabun menampakkan ketidakpedulian pada nilai estetik. Kecerungan pada hal yang material, yang konkret dan sensual dengan cepat menyebar ke seluruh dunia. Mendapat sebutan pansensualisme, yaitu melintasnya secara global kecerungan ungkapan seni yang serba indrawi dan keduniawian. Gelombang pasca modernitas ini tidak serta-merta menghilangkan empat gelombang modernitas sebelumnya. Meskipun pada periode pasca 1990-an, kecerungan gelombang pasca modernitas itu semakin dominan. Memasuki abad 21, kita melihat bagaimana seni rupa modern Indonesia didomestifikasi melalui proses nasionalisasi dari awal abad 20 dan pada tahun 1990-an mengalami regionalisasi di kawasan Asia Pasifik dan periode 2 abad 21 adalah proses internasionalisasi. Sekarang saya sampai pada tahap akhir dari ceramah saya, terutama berfokus pada fenomena seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia abad 21. Proses internasionalisasi dan integrasi seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia pada medan seni rupa kontemporer global merupakan fenomena utama abad 21. Proses internalisasi itu bergerak melalui dua arah. Dari arah internal ke wilayah global dan dari arah global ke wilayah internal. Di ranah kultural, arah internasionalisasi kultural meneguhkan dominasi pandangan dunia pasca modernitas. Dari arah global, pandangan realitas sebagai konstruksi tanpa esensi dan fondasi, realitas sebagai fragmen-fragmen yang heterogen, plural, relatif, menghilangkan yang tinggi, rendah, anything goes, bertemu dengan arus internal modernitas yang melemah. Modernisme yang sejak tahun 1980-an tergerus oleh gelombang pasca modernitas, Realisme sosialis yang habis setelah peristiwa berdarah 1965 dan muncul secara sporadis di tahun 1980-an, 1990-an dan memperoleh sedikit hawa segar setelah reformasi 1998. Warna seni nasionalistik yang memucat di tengah arus deras globalisasi serta seni spiritualitas keislaman yang juga cenderung melemah oleh iklim materialisme dan pragmatisme yang meluas pasca reformasi. Istilah dominasi nampaknya istilah paradoks jika diterapkan pada pasca modernitas karena ia pada dasarnya anti-hegemoni. Tapi ketika pandangan budaya pasca modernitas meluas, melintasi batas-batas bangsa dan menjadi center of gravity di bidang sosial, politik, ekonomi, moralitas, hukum, dan seni, maka pemaknaan istilah itu tidak dapat kita elakkan. Terutama setelah reformasi, perubahan tatanan politik menjadi terdesentralisasi, diikuti meluasnya pandangan relativisme pluralistis, fragmentatif, dan moralitas pragmatis yang tumbuh subur. Ideologi nampak sudah mati dalam politik, yang muncul kemudian adalah dalam narasi-narasi seperti politik identitas, populisme, good governance, dan anti korupsi, ekonomi kerakyatan, kedaulatan dan kemandiran ekonomi, Ternyata hanya slogan-slogan jualan politisi ketika satu pihak kontestan menang, hal-hal itu nampak menjauh dari kenyataan. Istilah-istilah seperti oligarki, demokrasi semu, transaksional, otoritarianisme mayoritas sering menjadi tajuk media arus utama. Medan politik menjadi sulit dibedakan dengan medan ekonomi. Masing-masing seringkali bertukar tempat di mana modal berkuasa mutlak. Akibatnya kesenjangan ekonomi meningkat, kualitas demokrasi menyusut, partisipasi masyarakat sipil melemah, lingkungan alam maupun sosial semakin rusak. Dalam kondisi seperti itu, apakah seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia bisa berbuat lain? Ketika seni sudah mati dan gelombang internasionalisasi kelembagaan menumbuhkan agen-agen baru di bidang seni, 
kurator, kolektor, bienal, art fair, balai lelang, maka medan seni Kota Mawar terbentuk lebih ke bentuk yang berorientasi pasar. Seni mendapat status baru sebagai komoditas. Dan jika di e, wilayah global terjadi komunikasi seni, maka komunikasi seni itu juga berlaku pada lingkup nasional. Oleh karena itu, jika seni adalah komoditas, maka seniman lagi-lagi adalah produsen komoditas. Kurator adalah pemasar komoditas, art dealer penjual komoditas, biena dan art fair ajang jual beli komoditas atau arena komoditas, dan kolektor pembeli dan spekulan komoditas. Tentu gambarannya tidak persis seperti karikatur itu. Tetapi tidak dapat dimungkiri, ukuran keberhasilan seniman kontemporer saat ini adalah sejauh mana karyanya laku terjual. Para perupa pada umumnya menerapkan moralitas pragmatis. Sejumlah agenda besar pameran di luar art fair maupun bienal seperti Indonesian AI yang disponsori oleh Saatchi Gallery tahun 2011, kemudian Indonesian Art Pleasers of Chaos tahun 2010, kemudian Contemporaneity, Contemporary Art Indonesia tahun 2010, dan SIP Indonesian Art Today tahun 2013, jelas merupakan upaya untuk menembus pasar internasional. Memang perlu dicatat artinya arus yang berbeda seperti ruang rupa, jatiwangi, art factory, dan para perupa populis lainnya yang melakukan kritik institusi dan mengangkat kepedulian sosial melalui seni. Tetapi prosentasenya nampaknya terlalu kecil dibanding gelombang yang lebih bersifat pragmatis. Secara genealogis, kemunculan seniman-seniman dalam seni rupa modern dan kontemporer kontemporer Indonesia tidak terlepas dari tiga kota yang menjadi pusat peringkat seni yaitu Bandung, Jogja, dan Jakarta. Pada periode 1990-an, pusat itu dapat tambah juga dengan kota Surabaya dan Denpasar Ubud. Dua pusat kota paling menonjol, Bandung dan Jogja, mau nampakkan dinamika berbeda. Bandung yang tadinya lebih kosmopolitan, nampak lebih terikat pada iklim intelektual rasional objektif ITB, artinya iklim modernisme, sedangkan Yogyakarta yang lebih etnopolitan pada 30 tahun 3, 30 tahun terakhir, iklim budayanya lebih cair dan sangat kondusif bagi pandangan dunia pasca modernitas. Hal ini dapat menjelaskan mengapa kemunculan seniman dari Yogyakarta lebih banyak dan lingkungan jejaring sosialnya lebih kosmopolit pada waktu belakangan ini. Proses internalisasi dan integrasi global seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia abad 21 baik di wilayah kultural, sosial, dan dimensi estetik, menampakkan stagnasi, bahkan kemunduran capaian tingkat kesadaran yang diekspresikan dibanding periode modernitas di abad 20. Medan seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia abad 21 yang terbentuk secara ironis menandai kelahiran dan kematiannya untuk menggunakan logika Robert Morgan dalam bukunya The End of the Art World tahun 98. Karena begitu lahir, medan seni rupa kontemporer dikendalikan oleh modal dan perputaran kapitalisme pasar. Lagi pula, iklim politik, ekonomi, sosial, beserta media sosial yang menarik ke bawah tingkat kesadaran manusia, ke tingkat instingtif dan ke tingkat egosentris, kesemuanya menghadirkan kesadaran kebendaan yang bawah. Saya ingatkan ketika Greenberg pada tahun 1940-an membandingkan seni modern dengan kids, yang ia khawatirkan adalah kondisi demokratisasi seni yang memberi standar seni melalui standar terendah selera masa. Sekarang kondisi tersebut terjadi dengan tidak adanya batas jelas antara yang tinggi dan rendah, benar salah, baik tidak baik, dan indah tidak indah. Apakah seni dapat berbuat dan bersikap berbeda? Saya yakin dapat, dan seni harus menasihkan ulang eksenis dirinya. Ini mengingat bahwa para agen yang terlibat pada medan seni rupa kontemporer pada umumnya adalah kelahiran ataupun lulusan dari perguruan tinggi. Demikian juga eh, kurator atau mungkin art dealer maupun para kolektor, sehingga untuk mentransformasi ke tingkat kesadaran lebih tinggi itu mungkin lebih masuk akal dimungkinkan dibanding medsos yang terlalu luas. Keduanya, jadi seniman harus lebih berdaulat, percaya diri, dan berpendirian. Keduanya, seni dan seniman perlu memikir ulang tentang seni, artinya, fungsinya, maupun orientasinya ke depan. Dengan demikian, seni dan seniman dapat menghindar dari 
situasi disorientasi, fragmentasi, dan disintegrasi masa kini. Terima kasih atas perhatiannya. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Dr. Yustiono. Uh, Dr. Yustiono is going to embark on his retirement journey. On this occasion, he will be rewarded with an award as a token of appreciation for what he has accomplished this year. Born in central Java on July 15, 1955, Yustiono completed his bachelor's degree in 1983 in Fine Art Department, Institut Teknologi Bandung, with a thesis titled Ideologies in Indonesian Modern Art, Tendencies and Its Meanings. His doctoral dissertation in 2005 discusses artworks from one of the most prominent Indonesian artists, Ahmad Sadali, titled Hermeneutic Interpretations of Ahmad Sadali's Works in the Context of Modernity and Islam Spirituality. During his career in Institut Technology Bandung, he has published several important articles to put forward the significance of art in Indonesian historical and cultural context. He has also been involved as a mentor and speaker at various academic events. At the peak of his career, in 1995, he initiated the Aesthetics and the Sciences of Art Research Group. With his younger colleagues, he was able to develop the study of art history and art theories, deliver them in classrooms, and disseminate them through other notable platforms and gatherings. His contribution and dedication in studying the intersection of art history and cultural studies are unparalleled. His study methods, approaches, and wisdom are a legacy to be preserved for the future generations of Indonesian art historians and scholars. Kami sore hari ini bersama teman-teman dari Fakultas Seni Rupa dan Desain dan juga teman-teman dari dosen Seni Rupa berkesempatan untuk bertandang ke rumah Pak Yustiono eh, sebenarnya dalam rangka untuk menyampaikan sebuah ucapan terima kasih Pak Yustiono terkait dengan masa purna bakti Pak Yustiono telah mengabdi di ITB dan juga di Fakultas Seni Rupa dan Desain. Jadi ini merupakan sebuah e, momen yang tentu saja sangat e, berat bagi kami ya, karena Pak Yustiono menjadi teladan kami, telah menjadi contoh kami, dan juga telah memberikan banyak sekali wawasan-wawasan kepada kami tentang bagaimana menjadi dosen, bagaimana menjadi individu pendidik, dan juga kemudian bagaimana menjadi uh, cendekiawan di uh, ITB. Kami tidak pernah lupa Pak Istiono juga pernah uh, menggariskan sebuah catatan sejarah sebagai peletak dasar KK estetika dan ilmu-ilmu seni Pak Istiono. Banyak sekali menyampaikan materi-materi keilmuan seni. Kami ingin menyampaikan tanda mata dari Fakultas Seni Rupa dan Desain Pak Isiono. Kemudian yang kedua, ini dari teman-teman dosen Seni Rupa ITB ya. Dari Kakak Estetika dan Ilmu-ilmu Seni dan juga dari Kakak Seni Rupa. Mohon diterima Pak Isiono sebagai rasa hormat kami kepada Pak Isiono. Terima kasih sekali. Terima kasih kepada Pak Ridrik dan juga yang memakai fakultas uh, seni rupa dan desain dan juga 
teman-teman dari kakak seni rupa dan kakak estetik karya seni yang masih mengingat dan juga memberikan cindera mata sebagai tanda kenangan untuk relasi yang selama ini telah kita bangun bersama. Saya sebagai satu sosok juga dibentuk oleh mereka-mereka yang ada senior saya, ada Pak Sujoko, ada Pak Sanento kalau dalam bidang teori, yang telah meletakkan banyak tradisi intelektual yang kemudian saya serap dan juga tumbuh berkembang. Saya muncul dan tumbuh tentu kemudian juga membina yang muda-muda yang Uh, menjalin tradisi intelektual baik dalam mengajar, meneliti, berpikir, melakukan berbagai pembaruan dalam pikiran-pikiran. Dan itu hemat saya tidak berhenti, tapi merupakan kegiatan sepanjang hayat. Kita sebagai perguruan tinggi itu menjadi agen pembaru, agen yang menjadi acuan dan juga pemandu dalam perkembangan dan kemajuan bangsa itu juga uh, hal yang terus menerus kita lakukan saya sangat berterima kasih atas uh, acara yang khusus ini dan juga uh, kenang-kenangan ini wassalamualaikum warahmatullah wassalam terima kasih pak yus Moving on to our first lecture, let me introduce Dr. Agung Hujatnika as the moderator. Dr. Agung Hujatnika is known as a lecturer at the Visual Arts Study Program, Faculty of Art and Design Institute of Technology, Bandung. Aside from teaching and researching, he is also writes extensively about art and curate exhibitions nationally and globally. Please welcome Dr. Agung Hujatnika.
Thank you for the introduction. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Greetings, a very good morning to everyone in Bandung and Western Indonesian time. And to our honorable speakers and conference participants, wherever you are across the globe at the moment, I would like to extend you a warmest greeting from us at the Culture Hub at the Center of Art, Design and Language Building at the campus of Institute Technology Bandung. I'd like to welcome you all to this first plenary session of the Asia International Conference on Aesthetics and the Science, Sciences of Art. And thank you very much for taking the time to participate in this conference. It is such a great honor and delight for me to be able to join you as the moderator for this first morning session. And just to start with a quick note, that this conference is being live streamed both on Zoom and YouTube. So for you who have friends or colleagues or fellow students who want to join this webinar, but not registered yet, please kindly inform them that they can join us live on FSRD ITB YouTube channel. And allow me to encourage you also to share today's webinar with your social network. The session will run for 45 minutes in total. And allow me to remind you that in order to keep this session on time, you may write your responses or questions in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. And our speaker will respond to it after his presentation. Distinguished guests and conference participants, this conference aims to reconstruct and reinterpret the passing events to get a more comprehensive view or perspective of the, of the past, present, and future. On this occasion, we shall have presentations from different prominent speakers who will bring us into an engaging discussion on Indonesian art and visual culture. I believe that the different perspectives and subjects that they bring will enrich our insights and knowledge. It is an honor for me to introduce Professor Adrian Fickers to this conference. Adrian Fickers is a professor of Southeast Asian Studies at the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, University of Sydney, Australia. He is a key academician in the field of regional cultural history and also a historian who has four decades focused on Indonesia. One of his most prominent publications is a History of Modern Indonesia, published in 2013, in which he discussed the social and cultural practices of Indonesian people, especially after it became a nation state. Professor Ajin Fikers has been involved in few projects with us at the Visual Art Study Program at ITB, including for the Gathering of Histories in 2012, in which we gather dozens of art, art historians and researchers from Asia Pacific region in a series of lectures, workshop, and seminar. He is still actively studying art history around Southeast Asia with a focus on Balinese art in Indonesia. His paper today is entitled The Impossibility of Art History in Indonesia. While it may sound provoking, this title may remind us to one of the great debates in the, in the Indonesian art history of the 70s, especially after Osman Effendi, the late painter and writer, proclaimed his 1969 essay about the non-existence of Indonesian painting. Osman Effendi questioned the basis of the aesthetics of Indonesian modern art that at the time was, to, was disconnected with any cultural roots in Indonesian society. So let's see how the debate resonates with Professor Adrian Fikers' presentation about art, Indonesian art history today. And without further ado, please welcome Professor Adrian Fikers and Pa Adrian, over to you. Terima kasih banyak, uh, Pak Agung, dan uh, selamat uh, di sini selamat sore, selamat siang, 
pada uh, pada hadirin dan teman-teman uh, saya di Bandung dan di tempat-tempat lain. Uh, dan juga saya ingin uh, menyampaikan selamat kepada uh, Dr. Yustiono uh, pada saat um, pensiun, tetapi uh, pasti beliau mener meneruskan penelitiannya untuk masa depan. Uh, jadi hari ini saya, uh, maaf, uh, tolong dari host bisa uh, menghidupkan screen sharing. Jadi seharusnya ada screen sharing dari panelist. Ah, ya, yeah. oke, okay. bagus, ya, yeah. terima kasih. Uh, hari ini saya ingin membicarakan sedikit tentang sejarah seni rupa Indonesia, khususnya sejarah seni modern, dan membicarakannya, membicarakan hubungannya dengan uh, seni rupa kontemporer. Jadi, uh, itu alasannya saya memilih Uh, judul The Impossibility of Indonesian of Art History in Indonesia oleh karena mungkin atau tidak mungkin ada sejarah seni rupa yang bisa menjelaskan bagaimana aliran atau bagaimana proses kemajuan, proses perkembangan dari awal seni rupa baru sampai bentuk-bentuk uh, yang di, disebut seni rupa kontemporer atau pasca modern. Dan untuk mengetahui uh, seni rupa pada abad ke-21, pasti kita perlu mengerti bagaimana bentuk seni rupa pada abad sebelumnya, khususnya pada abad uh, 20. Jadi saya ingin membicarakan bahwa memang ada ada kontinuitas tetapi juga ada diskontinuitas di dalam seni rupa baru Indonesia, sejarah seni rupa Indonesia, dan bagaimana pentingnya diskontinuitas yang ada untuk mengerti masalah-masalah uh, seni formal yang dihadapi oleh seniman-seniman Indonesia. Jadi dengan menyebut masalah kontinuitas, saya juga uh, menyinggung nama Claire Holt yang menulis uh, bukunya tentang seni rupa Indonesia atau kesenian Indonesia yang masih merupakan standar daripada semua uh, pembicaraan seni rupa <coughs> sampai sekarang. Dan di dalam buku itu memang Uh, Claire Holt di dalam Art in Indonesia, uh, dia mengambil uh, subjudul Continuities and Change. Jadi apakah memang ada kontinuitas, tetapi juga bagaimana bentuk perubahan yang terjadi. Dan khususnya di bab bagian ketiga dari buku itu, uh, Claire Holt membicarakan uh, bagaimana uh, seni rupa modern pada tahun 50-an, pada uh, dasawasa 50-an, waktu uh, Claire Holt mengatakan penelitian baru di Indonesia. Jadi, uh, dari historiografi Claire Holt, memang ada titik tolak untuk, untuk menjelaskan uh, perkembangan seni rupa Indonesia, tetapi ada juga beberapa masalah yang muncul. Dan beberapa tahun sebelum uh, bukunya Claire Hall Terbit, ada uh, salah satu pameran yang mungkin yang bisa disebut yang paling penting di dalam sejarah seni rupa Indonesia untuk menetapkan bagaimana narasi standar tentang asal-usul seni rupa Indonesia, yaitu pameran seabad seni rupa Indonesia yang diadakan tahun 
1976 di gedung yang sekarang menjadi Museum Seni Rupa dan Keramik Jakarta. Tetapi pada waktu pamerannya mau dijadikan gedung untuk uh, Galeri Nasional. Salah satu cita yang, yang tidak diwujudkan sampai tahun 1999 atau 8, saya lupa dengan pasti. Mungkin ada teman yang bisa memberi koreksi. Dan dalam uh, narasi yang uh, terwujud di dalam uh, pameran ini, uh, memang ada dua uh, bapak seni rupa modern Indonesia, yaitu Raden Saleh sama Sudiono. Dan keduanya merupakan uh, bukan saja pelopor, tetapi juga founder dari uh, seni rupa modern Indonesia. Akan tetapi, kalau biasanya di dalam uh, proses menulis sejarah seni rupa, harus ada aliran atau harus ada perkembangan stylistik yang terjadi yang merupakan uh, schools of art atau uh, yang bisa menjelaskan bagaimana perubahan formal yang terjadi dari uh, bentuk klasik sampai uh, bentuk yang modern yang memberi eksplorasi kepada uh, kemodernan dari seni rupa, yaitu mencari bentuk-bentuk yang baru di dalam seni rupa. Akan tetapi di antara Raden Saleh dan Sudiono memang ada diskontinuitas dan khususnya oleh karena yang menulis uh, sejarah seni, seni rupa Indonesia, di antara para ahli belum ada yang bisa menjelaskan uh, apakah ada uh, sekolah atau ada, apakah ada uh, pengikut uh, Raden Saleh yang berpengaruh sampai uh, Sudiono. Dan khususnya uh, sejarah ini juga dibentuk di dalam konteks Orde Baru, di mana uh, sebenarnya negara tidak merupakan salah satu patron dari seni rupa. Walaupun sebenarnya pada awal, uh, pada zaman kemerdekaan, memang Presiden menjadi Presiden Soekarno menjadi patron seni rupa. Tetapi walaupun uh, Presiden Soeharto ikut pada waktu pembukaan pameran tersebut, uh, sebenarnya Soeharto tidak memperhatikan seni rupa, apalagi tidak senang dengan seni modern yang mungkin uh, ya tidak sesuai dengan pikiran Orde Baru, yaitu untuk uh, mengutamakan salah satu uh, rasionalisasi dari tradisi yang bisa dikuasai supaya mengamankan atau uh, ya mendamaikan rakyat-rakyat. Uh, uh, soalnya kalau seni rupa modern biasanya ada unsur-unsur yang terlalu radikal di dalamnya atau ada unsur-unsur untuk menentang kuasa. Jadi pasti tidak disenangi oleh disenangi oleh uh, Sahato. Dan juga yang menarik bahwa versi sejarah seni rupa yang ada di dalam uh, pameran ini memang ada versi Kusnadi yang uh, kita lihat di dalam foto ini. Walaupun uh, versinya Kusnadi juga menghapus beberapa segi dari uh, sejarah seni rupa Indonesia. Memang ada patron-patron yang lain yang uh, yang muncul di Jakarta dan khususnya uh, di Jakarta tetapi juga di tempat-tempat lain di Indonesia pada tahun 70-an uh, abad yang lalu tetapi uh, mereka pada akhirnya juga dipinggirkan oleh Suharto. Ada masalah lain bahwa karya-karya yang terkemuka dari Raden Saleh tidak hadir di Indonesia pada awal uh, 
sejarah seni rupa Indonesia, yaitu karya-karya yang paling hebat dari Raden Saleh, seperti penanggapan uh, Raden Diponegoro, karya ini ada di Belanda uh, dari awalnya sampai uh, diserahkan oleh Ratu Belanda kepada uh, Soeharto tahun uh, 1970-an, akan tetapi waktu dikembalikan ke Indonesia, uh, lukisan ini tidak dipamerankan untuk umum. Jadi tersimpan di gedung istana. Jadi uh, bagaimana kalau tidak melihat uh, karya seni, bisa uh, seniman-seniman bisa uh, reaksi atau bisa dipengaruhi oleh karya tersebut. Apalagi ada karya-karya Raden Saleh yang hilang, seperti uh, karya ini yang uh, dianggap uh, juga mengandung sifat uh, nasionalis. Dan ada karya-karya Raden Saleh yang sampai sekarang masih tersimpan di Belanda, khususnya portrait-portrait dari Gubernur Jenderal uh, Hindia Belanda, seperti uh, portrait ini. Jadi semua ini tidak ada atau tidak di, disampaikan kepada seniman-seniman Indonesia sebagai sumber inspirasi. Dan uh, kita nggak tahu bagaimana dari karya, bagaimana perjalanan, bagaimana bisa membuat salah satu narasi dari karya ini sampai uh, pemberontakan atau sampai karya radikal dari Sujiono yang muncul Uh, tahun 1939 uh, 40 pada uh, abad yang lalu. Jadi ini merupakan salah satu diskontinuitas yang besar. Sebenarnya ada unsur-unsur kontinuitas seperti ada beberapa murid Raden Saleh, khususnya Raden Kusuma di Brata, yang juga aktif sebagai seniman. Dan uh, Raden Kusuma di Brata, orang dari Jawa Barat juga uh, ya yeah, merupakan uh, salah satu tokoh yang cukup rumit dimengerti oleh karena uh, sering membicarakan atau memperlihatkan sifat-sifat uh, sifat-sifat yang sedikit uh, nasionalis juga. Oke. Okay. Uh, Terus uh, juga ada uh, pembicara, ada, ada penjelasan uh, dari uh, sejarah seni rupa bahwa uh, uh, bahwa Sudiono menentang uh, gerakan Moy India dan Moy India yaitu uh, uh, lukisan lanskap juga dianggap anti nasionalis atau tidak. Uh, punya tempat di dalam sejarah seni rupa Indonesia. Padahal uh, sejarawan seperti Ong Ho Kam sudah memperlihatkan bahwa sebenarnya orang Indonesia yang melukis lanskap juga uh, juga bisa dianggap sebagai uh, pelukis nasionalis oleh karena mereka, mereka memperlihatkan Uh, tanah air dengan perasaan bangga. Akan tetapi susah menempatkan pelukis-pelukis uh, moy India atau pelukis-pelukis lanskap di dalam sejarah seni rupa. Uh, tambah lagi ada masalah bahwa orang-orang yang kadang-kadang dianggap uh, pelukis Indonesia seperti Ernst Duzincha yang uh, dianggap oleh Sukarno sebagai pelukis Indonesia, tidak dianggap uh, oleh Kusnadi sebagai salah satu sumber untuk sejarah seni rupa. Oleh karena dia orang Indo, uh, bukan orang pribumi. Dan juga Kusnadi tidak, uh, tidak memperhatikan atau mengusir seniman-seniman uh, Tionghoa dari sejarah seni rupa Indonesia, khususnya uh, Liman Fong yang salah satu seniman yang terkemuka uh, tidak 
disebut di dalam sejarahnya sejarah seni rupa Kusnadi, uh, walaupun uh, punya peranan baik uh, di dalam koleksi Bung Karno maupun di dalam sejarah seni rupa sebagai uh, seniman yang sangat berpengaruh. Dan biasanya uh, aliran Kusnadi, uh, aliran Sudiono biasanya dijelaskan oleh Kusnadi sebagai salah satu aliran realis. Akan tetapi sebenarnya uh, Sudiono dan kawan-kawan dari Persagi dan dari generasi sesudah Persagi sebenarnya juga punya cenderungan yang cukup modernis, yang juga uh, mereka senang eksperimentasi uh, dengan bentuk-bentuk yang berbeda dan mereka juga memperhatikan formalisme. Jadi uh, Otto Jayo dan orang-orang Persagi lain juga cukup uh, cukup modern di dalam uh, di dalam per, uh, di dalam perhatiannya dan uh, sampai uh, Hendro Gunawan yang juga diberi klasifikasi sebagai orang uh, realistis tetapi juga uh, orang-orang yang cukup modern di dalam bentuk-bentuk formalnya jadi di dalam sejarah seni rupa uh, biasanya ada kontras antara Uh, orang Persagi, orang Sudiono yang disebut realis dan abstrak yang biasanya dihubungkan dengan uh, dengan Bandung. Akan tetapi sebenarnya di antara orang yang paling realistis, seniman uh, lekra juga ada unsur-unsur yang lebih uh, artistik, yang lebih formal, yang uh, juga punya cenderung sampai uh, abstraksi uh, dan juga uh, kalau orang lekra lain seperti Amros Natalsia ada juga pengaruh dari aliran-aliran internasional seperti uh, seniman Meksiko. Uh, kalau misalnya orang lekra lain Batara Lubis uh, juga uh, seba, uh, uh, juga merupakan seniman yang modern dalam bentuk formal dan agak jauh dari realisme di dalam kesenian. Oleh karena Betara Lubis dan beberapa seniman yang lain dari generasinya mencari akar seni rupa dan akar uh, pola, akar bentuk-bentuk uh, seni rupa di dalam kesenian tradisional atau di dalam kesenian asli Indonesia. Uh, juga ya salah satu contoh lain orang lekra yang uh, juga uh, modern dan jauh dari realisme yaitu Johnny Johnny Trisno. Jadi biasanya di dalam penjelasan seni rupa ada uh, salah satu solusi untuk menetapkan di antara bagaimana jalan uh, perubahan di antara uh, Realisme dan abs, realisme Jogja, Sudiono dan abstraksi uh, Bandung uh, dan uh, seperti Ahmad Sedali, yaitu penjelasan bahwa ada juga cenderung yang disebut uh, lirisisme, salah satu uh, istilah yang uh, kalau enggak salah muncul uh, di dalam tulisan Senento Yuliman dan juga diberi di, disampaikan oleh Jim Supangkat di dalam penulisan sebagai salah satu penjelasan untuk mencari salah satu benang merah atau salah satu uh, aliran yang bisa di, dipakai sebagai penjelasan uh, jalan seni rupa, penjelasan perkembangan seni rupa. Uh, dan di dalam penjelasan lirisisme, uh, biasanya kesenian kontemporer yang, yang baru muncul pada tahun 70-an, uh, khususnya kesenian dari gerakan seni rupa baru, disebut anti-lyricist atau uh, anti-formal, tetapi masih uh, mempunyai hubungan dengan 
lirisisme oleh karena merupakan salah satu perlawanan, salah satu pemberontakan kepada bentuk lirisisme. Dan uh, seperti disinggung oleh uh, Dr. Yudhistiono, juga agak susah menjelaskan apakah kesenian kontemporer yang berasal dari tahun 70-an di Indonesia bisa mempunyai jalan perkembangan atau kemajuan atau sebenarnya ada uh, ada salah satu end of artwork yang terjadi di dalam kesenian kontemporer. Uh, jadi kita harus bertanya apakah memang masih ada lirisisme di dalam karya uh, orang gerakan seni rupa baru seperti Hadi, saya merasa memang ada. Dan apakah gerakan seni rupa baru merupakan salah satu titik akhir dari, dari uh, perkembangan yang terjadi sebelumnya? Saya kira tidak. Kalau misalnya uh, kita memperhatikan aliran-aliran tahun 80-an, 90-an, seperti uh, Jogjakarta Surrealisme yang dijelaskan oleh Dwi Marianto. Memang ada unsur-unsur lirisisme, ada realisme, tetapi juga ada surrealisme di dalamnya. Jadi ini salah satu aliran untuk menjelaskan perkembangan sejarah. Tetapi pada saat yang sama, seperti dibicarakan oleh Claire Holt dan Senento Yuliman, ada juga Uh, perkembangan yang terjadi di Bali, yaitu satu aliran di mana ada bentuk-bentuk kesenian baru, kesenian modern, tetapi yang masih berhubungan dengan kesenian tradisional Bali. Bali. Jadi kalau kita melihat pelukis-pelukis uh, dari tahun 30-an di Bali, boleh dikatakan betul-betul uh, modern dalam bentuknya dan mereka juga uh, bereksperimentasi di, de, dengan bentuk, dengan uh, form dan juga dengan uh, beberapa segi lain yang jauh daripada uh, kesenian tradisional. Dan juga mereka memberi salah satu penjelasan tentang uh, keadaan yang di sekitar mereka. Jadi pertemuan antara realisme dan juga bentuk-bentuk yang formal yang juga cukup modern. Sampai uh, seniman seperti Dewa Kompiang Kandel Rupa, Rupa, Ruka dari tahun 30-an boleh dikatakan sangat modern, sangat abstrak di dalam karyanya walaupun masih Uh, masih merupakan seniman representational, uh, ya, yaitu dengan uh, misalnya dengan menggambarkan salah satu desa atau kehidupan desa di Bali, uh, Dewa Kompiang Kandel Rupa, Ruka juga membentuk, uh, membuat salah satu karya yang luar biasa modernitasnya. Uh, dan aliran ini juga meneruskan melalui uh, orang yang, yang sangat kontemporer, yang sangat menentang keadaan, ke, menentang bentuk-bentuk uh, yang sudah ada di dalam kesenian, dan juga yang cukup radikal di dalam visi keseniannya, yaitu uh, uh, Almarhum Murniasi, Murni, uh, yang bagaimana sebenarnya uh, karya murni ini uh, merupakan salah satu uh, cara untuk mempertanyakan apakah uh, salah satu karya seperti ini bisa dihubungkan dengan perkembangan atau sejarah seni rupa baru di Indonesia dari uh, Raden Saleh dan Sujiono sampai sekarang, atau tidak ada narasi yang bisa menjelaskan karyanya. Sebenarnya saya merasa ada hubungan dengan karya-karya yang sudah ada, tetapi uh, 
tergantung juga pada situasinya. Jadi murni berasal dari konteks Bali, tetapi dari hubungan dengan dunia internasional karya suaminya misalnya, tetapi juga karya orang-orang dari Eropa. Jadi betul-betul karyanya betul-betul kontemporer, tetapi Uh, agak susah dibicarakan apakah kontemporer Indonesia atau kontemporer global. Ada juga seniman-seniman kontemporer yang biasanya tidak dibicarakan di dalam konteks uh, seni, rupa bar, seni rupa kontemporer Indonesia, tetapi masih luar biasa kontemporernya, seperti Mangu Putra, salah satu uh, pelukis yang karyanya agak realistis atau hyperrealistis, tetapi juga yang uh, mempertanyakan dasar nasionalisme dan mempertanyakan politik nasionalisme di Indonesia. Salah satu uh, wacana yang, yang cukup berani di dalam konteks uh, seni, seni rupa Indonesia yang biasanya tidak menyinggung hal-hal seperti itu, dan uh, cara untuk mempertanyakan uh, masalah-masalah nasionalisme adalah melalui uh, foto, ya, rekreasi dari foto-foto sejarah di dalam konteks yang, yang baru, yaitu uh, konteks uh, mengingatkan atau commemoration dari Uh, revolusi Indonesia dan uh, mempertanyakan bagaimana relevansi revolusi Indonesia untuk kehidupan uh, sekarang, untuk kehidupan kontemporer. Ada juga beberapa seniman kontemporer yang lain yang tidak biasa, biasanya tidak beri, diberi klasifikasi di, yang jelas di dalam penjelasan atau buku-buku tentang kesenian kontemporer Indonesia, tetapi juga uh, merupakan uh, karya yang uh, mengandung sifat kontinuitas dengan bentuk-bentuk yang lama dan uh, masih punya sifat keindonesiaannya. Uh, contoh yang lain, dan hampir semua contoh saya dari Bali, adalah uh, Teja Astawa. Uh, selain daripada itu, ada juga Uh, seniman Jawa Timur yang aktif di Australia, jadi uh, orang yang aktif di luar Indonesia, yaitu uh, Jumadi. Apakah Jumadi masih uh, punya posisi, mas, masih punya uh, narasi di dalam sejarah seni rupa Indonesia atau sudah menjadi seniman internasional? Jadi saya berakhir dengan pertanyaan-pertanyaan ini. Apakah uh, kesenian kontemporer masih bisa dibicarakan sebagai kesenian Indonesia? Dan apakah kesenian kontemporer punya hubungan dengan sejarah uh, yang terjadi sebelumnya atau sudah lepas dari sejarah? Uh, bagi saya, kita masih meng- memerlukan uh, pengertian sejarah untuk menjelaskan uh, kesenian seperti ini. Tetapi mungkin di antara uh, teman-teman yang ikut uh, hari ini ada penjelasan atau ada uh, kesimpulan yang berbeda. Ya, terima kasih. Oke, okay, kalau ada pertanyaan bisa dimasukkan di uh, chat atau di Q&A. Baik, uh, terima kasih Pak Adrian. Uh, thank you for your great presentation. Uh, Professor Adrian Frikers has brought us with a historical journey with uh, <clears throat> I think more than dozens of images. He has also exposed the problems of 
uh, discontinuities and gaps uh, in the writing of Indonesian art history. Uh, I see we have a um, question here mm. uh, from Rizky. So aside from artists from Java, Bali, and probably a few from Sumatra, what the threat or probably uh, you have elaborated in the nationally driven um, art history. <clears throat> um, what is the thread between these like artists in the mainstream with artists from those uh, who, who, are, who are from Kalimantan or Sulawesi, for instance? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I think the problem is that to become a a modern artist in Indonesia, you have to go to Java. So all of the Sumatran artists who are famous, uh, the Jendela and so on uh, group, all came from Sumatra to study in Bandung and Jogja. Uh, and it's very difficult to move away from uh, that, that context. Uh, so, so there are individual artists from Kalimantan. Uh, so Solihin, um, for example, would be one example there. Uh, but in terms of other, other artists, I, I'm struggling to think of anyone from Sulawesi. I think there's certainly individuals, but if they want to fit into a kind of stream of art history, then they have to be in Jogja, in Jogja, Bandung, or Jakarta to do that. Mm -hmm. So the centralized art world in Indonesia, which also reflect the centralized uh, of political and economical activity is still a big uh, problem for the writing of the Indonesian art history. Yeah, Pak Adrian? Yeah. Yep. Like, uh, th there's also a question from Danu. Uh, he has two questions here, but um, I think we can just pick one. Um, mm. Yeah, both good questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you, you may so choose, think, Adrian. Okay. Well, this I question. think the, the first question about yeah, can we talk about um, yeah, to, can we talk about a kind of some sort of ism uh, in Indonesian art is the same as my uh, question about whether there are particular aliran. Um, so, so just as in uh, European art history, we talk about cubi cubism and so on. Um, I think that's really what I was questioning because it seems that in Indonesia, there's not a straightforward movement uh, that uh, can be associated with one particular place that when we talk about realism, in fact, there are a lot of uh, a lot of artists who are, are not realist, are more formalist, even though they're usually regarded as realist. But also you don't get schools of art. You don't get somebody imitating a, a guru and following um, that, that line, uh, but rather uh, it seems more of a kind of individualist uh, line. So, so yeah, I think this is this is a problem for writing Indonesian art history that the periodization doesn't necessarily work all that easily. Um, for example, the landscape painting by Wakiti uh, that I showed was actually a later, I think, like a nineteen fifties or sixties landscape painting. Um, so it fits into the, the style of Moya India, but Moya India is associated with the, the 1930s. Um, but that does relate to the, the second question about um, Indonesia, An. Um, mm -hmm. I, think, I think still there is, uh, there is preoccupation with Indonesian questions. And that's one of the the issues that people like Kala Bianpun have raised that many 
contemporary Indonesian artists are actually only talking to, only addressing Indonesian audiences. Uh, so there, there's kind of a, an inbuilt Indonesian, Indonesian-ness uh, to their art. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I think uh, the, these are really good questions to, to pursue. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Padrian. Uh, I think we also have another important question here from uh, Pak Asmujo Jono Irianto. This is about how the awareness, awareness or uh, consciousness about the history, whether it's necessary also for artists, for practicing artists, and uh, if so, how we can push this this necessity of uh, historical awareness or consciousness among the artists. Mm, mm. Adrian. Uh, yeah, no, that, that, that's also about the history of exhibitions of art and books on art that uh, really in, so that 1976 uh, uh, exhibition was one of the the big exhibitions of its time, but then there were actually very few major exhibitions. And in 1976, that was one of the only opportunities that most people got to see uh, works from Sukarno's collection and the National Collection. And it wasn't really until Galnas was uh, opened in 1999, I think, uh, that, that people could actually kind of directly uh, communicate with Indonesian art. So it's only now that we're actually getting a lot of art history. And, and part of the reason for the big break is the lack of, um, yeah, the, the lack of exhibitions, uh, historical exhibitions, but also uh, that previously there was not much in the way of written art history. And, and even now it's, uh, yeah, it's hard to find alternative narratives. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, okay, and there's a question there about uh, women in art, which I think is is quite important. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The, you may the, you may add that also, please. Yeah. That that um, that. Well, I, I, I used Murni as an example of a of a radical uh, female artist, but I think although women have been uh, a a minority um, that certainly, it, except for the Rada and Saleh era, um, from Prasagi until now, there have been always important women artists and they've occupied important positions, but quite often as individuals. So although with Jogjakarta Surrealism, you had Lucia Hartini and uh, that even with Garakan Sani Rupa Baru, uh, as well, uh, that it was, you know, certainly it was not all male, but still, uh, I guess a lot of the voices of Indonesian art uh, are still male, um, including today. Unfortunately, we don't, well, uh, Farah uh, might have, have commentary, but uh, most of the commentators are, are male. Uh, so I think that's also an issue with writing Indonesian uh, art history that people like uh, Farawadani, uh, Ulandir Ganturo and Kalabianpun have helped to address, but there's still a long way to go. Okay. Uh, I see we are running out of time here, but um, maybe as a kind of closing remarks from your previous presentation, uh, you can also maybe respond to this uh, comments or question from Hendro Wianto. Mm. about the the possibility or whether it's possible to write a total comprehensive history while we also know that this continuity is also a kind of inherent part in the historical writing not only in art historical writing but in historical writing in general mm. well and 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 i think yeah built into that question is a uh, a very good question about whether Indonesia also has continuity, that there are yes. different Indonesias being discussed. Um, I think that that, 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 is, that is quite significant, but, but I still think that it's, well, 
so within the general Indonesian context, Indonesians still seek to deal with their, their past. So at the moment, there's a controversy about the study of Indonesian history in general. And I think we should think about art history as a stream of history. So in terms of understanding who Indonesians are as citizens uh, participating in democracy, then knowledge of history is essential for that. So, so yes, certainly uh, that's, that's a question of discontinuity and people uh, need to be aware of the difference. So not to assume that Radin Saleh had the same mentality as artists from the 1930s or the, the 1970s. The, the, the whole historical framework, the whole way of thinking is quite different. Uh, but in recognising those differences, still to identify what belongs to the place of Indonesia. So if we think about Indonesia as a historical site where art took place, then you can see a number of elements of continuity still. So I don't think we should give up on um, Indonesian art history, but we should think about it as a history that has a global context, uh, a global context from ancient trade, a global context through Dutch colonialism, um, but also then a, a post-independence, uh, post-colonial global context as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, very interesting, but um, I'm sorry, we, we have to stop the, the discussion for now. I'm, I'm sure there are uh, more questions and comments here, but uh, uh, maybe we can discuss it at other moments. <clears throat> and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, finally, we have come to the end of this uh, first morning session of this plenary uh, seminar. And I would like to extend our biggest thanks to Padrian, uh, virtual clap to him. <laughs> and uh, yes, before, before closing this session, I would like to remind you that uh, we have a uh, next session by other speakers. And <clears throat> uh, thank you again for uh, your patience and uh, participation in the uh, Q and A session. Uh, please make sure that uh, you will be back for the next plenary session at 1 p.m. Thank you so much and goodbye for now. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Uh, Agung Hujatnika and Professor Adrian Fickers. Um, we will have an hour lunch break. The event will resume at one Western Indonesian time. The second lecture will be given by Professor Oshiro Soji Masahiro from University of Kyushu, followed by the third lecture by Professor C.G. Wang Lin Wee from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. Both lectures will be moderated by Farah Wardani from Jakarta Arts Council and director of Jakarta Biennale 2021. During the lunch break, you are welcome to leave the Zoom um, conference. Please, just please um, click on the email that, the, the link that's sent to your email, and then we'll see you back in one hour.
、えー、とディンダさんとお話ができますかハロー、プロフェッショナルショージ先生。ハロー、ハロー、ナイスティミッチュー。No one else seems to be on. <laughs> <laughs> But they said、uh, 12th、uh, at this time to be on, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? <laughs> oh, uh, fine. And then? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are we. Spending a few minutes in the fourth Asian art show. Oh, I'll、really? be talking about your catalog essay. Oh, get it. Ah, Dinda san. Ah, sensei. Hi, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. Ah, Professor, we,、uh, nice to meet you. I'm the, the interpreter for Professor Ushiro. My name is Dinda. Nice to meet you. Yes.、Um, Are you somewhere around? <laughs>、uh, I'm in. Oh, right, right, right. In i t a b e yes.、Uh, yeah. I, I have a.
Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Asia Art International Conference on Aesthetic and the Sciences of Art. This event is held on Monday, 20th September 2020 by the Faculty of Art and Design of Institute Technology Bandung. This conference is a part of celebrating 100 years of education in ITB. The theme of the conference is Indonesian art and visual culture of the 21st century. We will resume. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> right. We will resume our second lecture, which will be given by Professor Ushiro Soji Masahiro from University of Kyushu, followed by the third lecture by Professor C.G. Wan Ling Wee from Nanyang Technological University, Singapore. Both lectures will be moderated by Farah Wardani from Jakarta Arts Council and Director of Jakarta Biennale 2021. Let me introduce Ms. Farah Wardani as our moderator. She is known as an art historian, writer, and organizer from Indonesia, who has been active since 1999. From 2007 until March 2015, she was appointed as the executive director of Indonesian Visual Art Archive, IVAA, in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. She served as assistant of director of the Library and Archive of Nat National Gallery Singapore from 2015 to 2019. Currently, she resides in Jakarta for her position as the director of Jakarta Biennale and member of the Visual Arts Community Jakarta Arts Council. Please welcome Ms. Farah Wardani. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're back at session two of ACR. It is my honor to be the moderator of uh, lecture two and three with two very distinguished art historians from Japan and Singapore. Uh, before we start, I'd like to inform you uh, about the Q&A session after, uh, we'll resume after lecture three. Uh, so please share your questions in the Q&A chat box. Uh, we don't allow raised hand for this, so please do. Uh, we, can, we will compile the, the, the questions and uh, I will select the, the relevant questions in the, uh, in the, in the Q&A session. Um, so without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce you about this very special uh, person, um, Ushiro Soji Masahiro Sensei from Kyushu University. Um, born in Kita Kyushu in 1954, graduated from the School of Letters, Kyushu University, and joined Fukuoka Art Museum as curator in 1978. Uh, Sensei was also chief curator of Fukuoka Asian Art Museum from 1999 to 2002. So he taught at Kyushu University in Fukuoka, Faculty of Humanities as professor from 2002 to 2020. He has curated many exhibitions of modern and contemporary art in Asia, including the birth of modern art in Southeast Asia, artists and movements in 1997, the first two Fukuoka Asian Art Triennials, 1999 to 2002, and 50 years of modern Vietnamese paintings, 1925 to 75 in 2005. Also, Sensei was the author of many books and articles in this field. Recently, he opened a research library for Asian art in Fukuoka and is working on a book on Southeast Asian modern and contemporary art. So I allow uh, Sensei to start his presentation. Uh, it's a journey back to his first trip to Indonesia, including uh, Jakarta, Bandung, Jogja, and Bali, and especially to Itebe in 1978. It was a trailblazing research trip that started uh, the first Asian art show in 1980. I, Welcome, Professor, for Sensei to start his sharing. Please, Sensei. Hi. Uh, thank you very much for introducing me. Um, it, it, just PowerPoint.
えまず最初に、ETV 開学,開学100周年おめでとうございます。このような重要な場に、えー、プレゼンテーションの機会を与えていただき、えー、大変光栄に思います。First of all, I would like to congratulate you on the 100th anniversary of i t e b e I am very honored to have the opportunity to give a presentation in this very important moment. 私が初めて i t e b e を訪問したのは42年前のことになります。その度で私は初めてインドネシア美術に出会うことになります。その度はその後の私のキューレーター、そしてアートヒストリアンとしての人生の扉を開ける重要な出来事でした。その度の意味を改めて考えてみたいと思います。The first time I visited Itebe was 42 years ago. It was the first time for me to encounter Indonesian art on a trip. As a curator or art historian, the trip was a very important event as it opened the door of my life as a curator or art historian. Therefore, I would like to think again the meaning of the trip. 1978年12月1日、私は福岡市美術館の解説を準備する新人学芸員としてジャカルタのケマヨラン空港に降り立ちました。大学を卒業したばかりの私にとって初めて訪れた外国でもありました。I landed at Kamayoran Airport in Jakarta on the 1st of December 1978 as a new curator who was preparing the opening of Fukuoka Art Museum. Indonesia was the first foreign country I visited soon after I just graduated from university. 私は4名からなる調査チームの一員でしたが、そのチームの目的は、1980年に福岡市美術館が開催する予定のアジア現代美術展へのインドネシアの参加を実現することでした。結局、アジアの13カ国から500名近いアーティストが参加することになるアジアに焦点を絞った世界最初の大規模なアジア現代美術展でした。I was one of the four members of the research team that had a purpose to enable Indonesia to participate in the Asian Contemporary Art Exhibition, which was planned to be held in 1980 by Fukuoka Art Museum. It was the first Asian art show Fukuoka as the world's first large scale that was focused on Asia, participated by almost 500 artists from 13 Asian countries. 当時の日本ではインドネシアの現代美術はもちろんインドネシアに関するあらゆる情報が不足していましたそこでユネスコ参加の NGO である IAA インターナショナルアソシエーション・オブ・アートのインドネシア国内委員会を頼ってその委員会に展覧会のキュレーション出品する作品の選考などを含むマネジメントをお願いする計画でした。IAA, exhibited. 当時インドネシア国内委員会の会長はモホタル・アピンで、えー、事務局長はグレゴリウス・シッタルタであり、えー、モホタル・アピンは ETB の芸術学部長を務めていて委員会の主要なメンバーはあー ETB の教授たちでした私たちは IAA のメンバーと何度もミーティングを行い、えー、バンドンのアーティストたちのスタジオを訪ね多くの作品を見ました。イーテベ以外の美術家たちとも会合を持ちました。At that time, the chairman of Indonesian National Committee was Mohtar Apin, and the general secretary was G. Siddhartha. Mohtar Apin was the dean of faculty of art of イーテベ。And as the main members of the committee were the professors or lecturers of ITB. 
We have several meetings with IAS members, visited the studio of abundance artists, and also so many artworks. え、uh, we had several meetings with IH members and also we with uh, the same artists other than ITPs. Thus, after Bandung, I visited Astri Jakarta and Ikaji Jakarta. I also met the pioneers of Indonesian contemporary art, such as Afandi, uh, Sujoyono, Agus Jaya, and Barley. <laughs> そして for implementing the exhibition, after Indonesia, I visited Thailand, Philippines, Malaysia, and Singapore. I met many artists and saw many artworks. It was not only the starting point of my career as a curator or art historian, but also as the first contact between Japanese museums and the contemporary art in Southeast Asia. その美術における私 I had a strong impression on the spoken languages that were so unfamiliar when I met the artists during my trip around Southeast Asia. It was the word of national identity. It seemed that people were asking themselves unanimously that what Indonesian art is, what base that makes Indonesian art, what Indonesian or thinks as Indonesian is in art. For Japanese people, the issues of national identity in art was not urgent. That is why at that time, to me, as someone who lack of knowledge in the early of his 20s, I found it hard to understand why such an issue was so important. Facing those incomprehensible issues and thinking how they came from the cultural, social, and political context became such a step of my understanding towards Southeast Asian art. It was Mohtar Apin first and the ITB's lectures who led me to such an awareness concerning these issues. で、台座の上のフォームにインドネシア美術を作り出そうとしていました。Indonesian artists at that time were trying to create Indonesian art either in concrete form, abstract form, 
form in canvas, or even form in a pedestal. By the time it reached 1990, the numbers of artworks with the expression formed by political and social themes towards the installa installation and performance were increasing rapidly. It was a phenomenon that was covered not only in Indonesia, but also in the whole Asia. I summarize such trends in an exhibition called Realism as an Attitude, Fourth Asian Art Show, Fukuoka, 1994. この調査の時も after that, I held an exhibition called The Birth of Modern Art in Southeast Asia, 1997, to introduce the history of modern art in Southeast Asia to Japan. Itebe's members helped me so much during this obs observation as well. Furthermore, as the chief curator of the newly established Fukuoka Asian Art Museum, I planned the open commemorative exhibition of first Fukuoka Asian Art Triennial and picked up Asian art in the latter half of the 90s with the keyword of communication, collaboration, and community. このよう ,キュレーターとしてのキャリアの中でインドネシアをはじめ東南アジアの美術をさまざまに取り上げてきましたがそれは1978年のインドネシアの旅にその源がありそれがすべての始まりだったように思われます。いや、むしろ私のキュレーターアートヒストリアンとしてのキャリアは今振り返ってみるとそこで出会った最初の問いその答えのない答えることが極めて困難な問いインドネシア美術とは何かという問いへ向かう旅のようなものだったのかもしれ
He is the author of the Asian Modern Culture, Capitalist Development, Singapore, published in 2007, and is presently working on a project tentatively titled A Regional Contemporary, Asian Art Exhibitions and Popular Culture. He has held visiting fellowship at the Center for the Study of Developing Societies, Delhi, and most recently at the National Humanities Center in the USA. Professor Wan Ling will be presenting about coordinating contemporary Asia in art exhibitions. So without further ado, I will allow Professor Wan Ling to start his uh, presentation. Please, Professor. Thanks. Thanks very much, Para, And thanks to ITB for this invitation. It's a tremendous um, privilege to be able to speak at this conference. Um, First off, just to say I'm not a art, an art historian, but a cultural critic. So my perspective is sort of a literary cultural perspective. Secondly, I apologize that this is really, again, about the last century rather than the 21st century. Um, this is what happens, you ask all the people to speak. Anyway, without further ado, let me start. Coordinating contemporary Asia and art exhibitions. So the focus of in this presentation is on a selection of key representative exhibitions in the 1990s. They are the fourth Asian art show Fukuoka, which uh, realism as an attitude, which Ushiro Shoji sensei has just talked about. 1994, that's the 1994 show. Contemporary art in Asia, traditions, tensions, 1996. And the second Asia Pacific Triennial of Contemporary Art, Brisbane, Australia, 1996 as well. The exhibitions, in particular, address the questions of tradition and cultural change in recent contemporary art. But while, expectedly, the legacy of colonialism persists, the overall thrust was to set art in the everyday context of rapid modernization and urbanization, particularly in the wake of Cold War era nation building and the emergence of the so-called East Asian miracle economies of, as we know, Singapore, South Korea, Taiwan, and Hong Kong and to examine the art enabled by the weakening of modernism and the separation from uh, daily life, which is now sort of possible in this, uh, was emphasized in these exhibitions. These exhibitions articulated flexible intimations of what I call the global regional in contemporary art, an art able to synchronize tradition into an inclusive understanding of contemporary Asian art, and in which the exhibition itself is an inseparable part of new knowledge production. How should art from the region now be presented as contemporary if freed from the West rest binary, did not have to reject the presence of the traditional, and did not have to conform to paradigmatic painting and sculptural practices linked with a prominent post-war high modernism that privileged abstract expressionism and proclaimed itself as universal. Temporality is a major concern here. The region's increasing economic success meant that we Asians, or is a fictive term, but an important one, we Asians could now conceive of ourselves as sharing the evil present with the advanced West, we are, so to speak, caught up. So because with the Asian economic miracle as a possibility in the region, as a visible possibility for Southeast Asian countries to copy, copy the 1990s was no longer the 1950s and 60s, which was saddled with what is called modernization theory linked with the economist W.W. W. Rostow. And the modernization theory then had a teleology, and we in Asia were always behind the curve of history. Uh, uh, we always lagged and in the past and stuck there since colonial times, but now, of course, in a post-war era, they emphasized this more than the colonial era did. So in that sense, contemporaneity was now in our grasp. One major theoretical and uh, curatorial response to the latest new in the region is, was an expanding sense of the modern elastic enough to retain tradition as part of a present day life. Underlying this response, it could be said, is the rejection of conceptions of self-sufficient high culture 
that separated high and low, spiritual and material. The exhibitions appropriate and modify the early 20th century uh, historical avant-garde and post-war new avant-garde anti-art attacks on modernism's autonomy aesthetic in the paradoxical appreciation of how installation art, performance art, and conceptualism seemed able to draw in local materials and cultural traditions could now be recognized institutionally as opposed to what uh, the new avant-garde you know, in its projection of the museum was doing. To be recognized institutionally as part of the practice of a regional contemporary art. And I'll end by some thoughts in the present, uh, when we reach the end of the presentation. So the first section is called reconstituting the na reconstituting national culture and the traditional, and this fits in with a lot of what uh, Professor Shiro Shoji is saying. So the acknowledged leader in exhibiting modern Asian art, of course, is the Fukuoka Art Museum. And um, from 1979-1980, the Art Asian Artist Exhibition, to, to in, during that period, 1979 to 1994, we saw incremental and persistent attempts to dress tradition with the backdrop of also incremental regional economic development and its multifarious social cultural impact gaining increasing relevance as that which affects both artistic content and form. So Fukuoka's inaugural show in 79 begins with the issue of the problem of tradition vis-a-vis -vis the present age in Asian art. And onto the third Asian art show, uh, 1989, Fukuoka's age survey shows do not much exceed the indefinite regional tracings of modernist and contemporary art. Um, this is partly uh, the case when those early art shows until the uh, third Asian art show were selected by national selectors rather than by the museum, which changed from the third show onwards. The 1994 fourth Asian art show was the breakthrough, uh, I think we recognize, with the theme as Ushiro Shoji Sensei says, realism as an attitude. The final selection was made by Fukuoka's selection committee at this time. The exhibition's dense framing essay is by Ushiro Shoji Sensei himself, entitled Realism as an Attitude, Asian Art in the 1990s. And this delineates how the art featured in the fourth show can be defined as contemporary Asian art because new artistic form and content emerge in relation with definitive regional and not only global events in the 1980s. Crucial here, because global is often a euphemism for Euro-America. To begin with, Ushiro Shoji uses realism in a restricted manner. Quote, since the end of the late 1980s, a common outlook has been widely noticed in Asian art, namely an extremely realistic outlook. That's to say, art took into account uh, uh, works based on social problems, urbanization, uh, daily life. So realism did not refer to illusionistic realism in visual art, but to the artist's stance towards everyday reality of political economic events that may destabilize society. And referencing the local in terms or the regional in terms of events were important. So he writes, in Asia, several political systems have changed and the democratic movement has led to bloody incidents. Now, the indirect reference here is to the 1989 Tiananmen Square protest as one of those bloody incidents that would have been inescapable in 1984, followed by China's increased prosperity. So political transitions, or more accurately, maybe not quite socialist transitions into some sort of strange form of capitalism, rapid urbanization and industrialization in essentially agricultural societies, Ushiro Shoji remarks quote, seem to have confused and distorted uh, people's minds. So he also goes on to contend that the fourth Asian art show takes place in the aftermath of modernism. That is to say, it goes beyond the dilemma stricken, quote, basic framework of modern Asian art. And here, the opposite, there are two reasons. The first is artists have access to new formats and media, such as installation and performance, there is a noticeable increase, he writes, in the use of personal everyday objects, 
in order to, he says, undertake a new subject such as one about society demanded the use of a new form of representation. The second reason is that, quote, the term Asia encompasses different social circumstances resulting from different economic conditions and political systems. And so, depending on how open or closed these countries are to the latest imperatives to develop economically, both artistic content and form will change. This does not mean that the traditional disappears, but that the traditional, freed from the constraints of modernist formats and the, the burden of being national, artworks could now convey more individual messages using local resources. Quote, uh, Ushiro Shoji, uh, using as a base the traditional forms used, using as a base the traditional forms used in Wayang, Java's shadow puppet theater, Dadang Cristanto, Indonesia, rightly protests against mass murder, unquote. Ushiro Shoji effects a def definition of contemporary Asian art or Asian contemporary art, that seems to be more common in Japan in which the late 1980s becomes a moment of rupture with the post-war legacy of modernism, in which the post-colonial and post-independence demands to be national are weakened. And when vanguard art practices can be used in conjunction with local, local cultural resources and heritage. Reiko Tumi remarks that, quote, in English, contemporary art eventually shed its genuine meaning of today's art to become a critically loaded concept. It followed postmodern art of the 1980s and 1990s before it came into frequent use in the 21st century and began to invoke the discourse of the contemporary and contemporaneity." Unquote. So in comparison, I would suggest, Ushiro Shoji's contemporary Asian art marks a moment in the mid-1990s when it becomes more conceivable to invoke cultural heterogeneity so as to slowly position that heterogeneity in horizontal conjunction, in horizontal relationship with the contemporary and contemporaneity. So let me move on to my next section, which I entitled Synchronizing Tradition in the Contemporary. So um, uh, Ushiro Shoji's move, or the fourth Asian arts move uh, in curation was an integral step from fixed cultural identification to an articulation of the present as performatively heterogeneous. So the heterogeneity is performed in the exhibition to create and to, to create a, a sort of performative based unity. Yeah, something like that. And uh, in the process, the East-West dichotomy is uh, avoided. And this move comes into plain view with two high profile 1996 exhibitions. The Asia Society's Contemporary Art in Asia, Traditions and Intentions, and the Queensland Art Gallery's uh, Second Asian Pacific Triennial, which I will shorten as APT. I'll say a brief, a few brief general, I'll say, I'll give two generalizations about each of the exhibitions and then try to say a bit more and then go on to say something about the present. So generally speaking, traditions and tensions featured artwork from Indonesia, Thailand, Indo India, Philippines, and South Korea. And it attempted mainly to radicalize or politicize what can be called the exotic traditional in ways that contested hierarchical or state-driven nationalistic um, identities. While the exhibition was organized by the Asia Society in New York City, and the first instance was aimed at an American audience, the guest curator selected was Thailand's Apinan Pushyananda, staging authenticity through the curator as well, whose star, of course, was ascendant in the 1990s. The second APT had a wider art selection than traditions tensions, grouped in loose geographical uh, clusters of East Asia and Southeast Asia. But the theme is harder to pin down because of the gallery's preference of what they called integrating concepts rather than themes. So for the first APT, Tradition and Change, 
and for the second, present encounters. The deliberately inclusive scope was reinforced by a very expensive co-curatorship model for the first three editions of the APT, which was important for networking, in some ways networking the region, sort of in a way networking Asia into existence, so to speak. The second APT had 15 teams curating 42 Australian and foreign curators and featured Apinan as the curatorial coordinator for, to, to chair the Australian art. It offered what Pat Hoffi calls an understanding of the contemporary in a way that was not as conclusive as that presented by exhibitions north of the equator. That is to say, of course, uh, West, advanced Western museums. Unsurprisingly, it was criticized and Ushiro Shoji Sensei himself said that the second APT lacked coherence, but others saw that it offered different terms of reference, uh, many terms of reference. And in a sense, I think arguably it takes the same sorts of tensions that existed in traditions and tensions, and it ex expanded of those tensions. So on, one, on the one hand, there was, except that the tensions become more extreme, you might say, on the one hand, there's, there's a position in which the exotic and the tradition, exotic traditional should be reconceived as the historically aware contemporary, as the historically aware contemporary. On the other hand, there was an argument for how uh, in Asia, the mix of economic development, uh, art and political configurations led to still valid avant-garde art separate from the um, Euro-American art of the 1970s because of a different sort of source, yeah? So as I say, despite the, the, the tensions are similar to traditions and tensions, but on a broader scale. So despite the differences in scale between tradition tensions and the triennial, their curatorial experimentation with new, newer knowledge or frameworks resulted in the flexible and self-reflexively uneven, it is aware of this unevenness, but the synchronization takes place anyway. The uneven synchronization of tradition in the contemporary. So in the preface to the catalog, Apinan sets the context uh, for tradition's tensions. The five countries chosen are meant to be indicative. They have a wide range of traditions. So the responses of how traditions work in it to this intense uh, globalization and modernization uh, were varied. Nevertheless, one central difficulty he emphasizes is that of tensions and complexities within Asian societies. Supposedly post-colonial uh, nation, national states are quite capable of supporting art with essentialist identity content to maintain internal colonization. This emphasis takes up center stage in the exhibition. The um, essay by Gita Kapoor, I think, is particularly uh, revealing because um, her essay is called Dismantling the Norm. And here she says that the sort of national integrated Indian identity, which was male, modern, and secular, was honorable, had its moment, but now needed to make way for a larger space, yeah? a larger space in which um, a pro, uh, which the sectarian, meaning to say tribals, Dalits, women, the religious and popular visual culture could appear because they had been suppressed. So she's not interested in hybridity because obviously she wants a sort of movement forward for the sectarian to emerge from the below. So in the installations that are seen in traditions and tensions have a specific, uh, and the way they use the local she makes a very specific point I think that's interesting. She says that it is arguable, yeah, that the power of the installation work arise from, quote, a relationship to materials and skills that are quite, that is quite different from that known in the West. You must remember that in Asia, the material is still connected with artisanal practice, with hand, handicraft. The artists have skills, there are artisans in transitional stages within a village and urban market economy who have traditional skills, unquote. The position outline applies in approximate ways, I think, to work in the exhibition from Indo India, Indonesia, and the Philippines, but less 
to South Korea. But this then contributes to a sort of distinctive avant-garde in which the traditional trading in some ways that it stays by, the, within, by being set within a new market economy, nevertheless still had a frisson that goes into contemporary work. The South Korean um, work, uh, essay by uh, the historian, art historian, Jae Ryung Ro, Encountering the World, the Past and the Present, I think is quite different in emphasis and provides a sort of, of another view of the Asia that's being synchronized here. Yeah? She argues that the Korean artists exhibited in traditional tensions, quote, have artworks shaped by the consequences of the nation's past the history of modernity, the burden of assimilating and catching up in terms of modernization, the lingering memories of tradition and the tensions created in the process of change. That is to say, what is important is that these are lingering moments because Korea's entry into globalization as national policy from 1994 changes the way all of these are uh, thought through. Already in the APT, there's an argument by uh, uh, Suyong An that, like Japan in some ways, arguably, J Korea comes into contemporaneity increasingly in the 1950s with their practice of modern art. So she argues, and in the second APT conference, that the, that that um, the the that uh, let me see. Yeah, okay. From the end of the 1950s, Korean art has kept pace with world art movements through the various practices and reflections of art and its own identity during the last 40 years. Moreover, Koreans have become aware of the importance of global exchanges and proud of our potential to make a contribution to global culture. So this is a very different orientation, I think. And there's a split clearly between Northeast Asia and Southeast Asia. And this comes into full play, I think, in the second APT. The second APT, you might say, I think arguably has two ends. One end represented by David Elliott, the curator, who talks, who says this, it was in the Far East, in China, Thailand, Indonesia, Taiwan, and to some extent, Singapore and Korea, where the mix of economic development, artistic discourse, modernity, and political power was radically different from that in the West, that the concept of an avant-garde still seemed valid. So it's a metropolitan orientation in some ways, but that's his position. Gita Kapoor strengthens her position, and it's very interesting what she says. She argues that it is worth asking why the civilizational frame should have shrunk to the size of the global metropolis, which is very sort of highly polemical, like right? shrunk to the size of the presumably Western global metropolis is that the only recognizable site for art today. It is also necessary to develop a stylistics of being that suits the historically conscious contemporary. So how do we rethink all traditional practices that still exist? Must the contemporary be in a particular metropolitan form? So uh, Asmujo um, Juno Irianto asked a question just now in 2002's under construction ex uh, exhibition it, organized by the Japan Foundation Asia Center, also asked in his exhibition essay, how work that doesn't fit into this sort of global metropolis framework might be thought through. So we have here Asia that is not coherent, but yet performatively uh, is performed into existence as a way through the exhibition format. So a few concluding thoughts on where Asia is now. And they just, they're not, they're not fully set in place, they really are just thoughts. First, I think we can say representation of Asia has been to a greater or lesser degree achieved. Uh, China, I think, starts to take much stronger place after 97 with the Asian economic crisis. Contemporary Chinese art moves to the fore, but nevertheless, we've seen uh, Simrim Gill appear at the Tate Modern, in 2006, in 2015, when I was last in New York City, MoMA had finally bought Museum of Modern Art New York, and finally bought some Asian art, and Vikrit and Navin were on display in somewhat incoherent fashion on the ground floor of MoMA. 
institutions now exist uh, that exhibit Asia, but problematic, I think, because you still have to wonder how much China will be taking central place. And it's very important to think about this because in a sense, these other exhibitions have needed Asia to stage these various countries, but China, because of its size, does not need Asia. China does not need Asia, yeah? And um, as for how Southeast Asia is represented, or I think it, it has gone back to being presented as a region uh, in itself. The, the larger presentation of Asia seems heavily weakened. So it seems to be China, India, Southeast Asia. And we can even see this in the Asia Society's revamped program because Vishaka Desai, who commissioned Traditions and Tensions has, was an important force in changing the way art got away from sort of Buddhistic statues, that sort of thing in the Asia Society. And just to give you a few instances of what the Asia Society has done under Tan Bun, Tan Bun Hui when he became a, a, a director of galleries. In 2019, they staged MF Hussein, Art and the Nation, so South Asia. In, again, in 2019, the Progressive Revolution, Modern Art for a New Asia. In 2018, After Darkness, Southeast Asian Art in the Wake of History. This was Indonesia, Vietnam, and Burma. Quoting uh, Katini here, After Darkness Comes the Light. And then Deconstructing China in um, 2015, Chinese Photographer and Video Art. So in some ways, I think that moment of Asia has lost. Uh, some will argue, like uh, Joan Keyes argued, that it's not necessary, more, ne not necessary anymore because Asian art is now global art. But I think I'm not 100% sure of that, but it's an argument to be considered. I end here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Wanling, uh, for a very thorough reading of uh, like very seminal exhibitions of defining contemporaryness uh, in Asia uh, since the 90s. Um, uh, I have been uh, seeing uh, and uh, compiling, there's a lot of questions in, on queue uh, responding to um, Ushida Shoji Sensei's uh, presentation. Uh, for everyone who, who would like to respond to Professor Wan Ling's uh, presentation, please uh, use the chat box uh, with the Q&A. Uh, there are like some several layered questions by Mas Hendro Rianto, but I would like to kind of sum, summarize <coughs> all of them and save it for uh, after, after uh, uh, offering uh, some of the some of the other questions to sensei first. Uh, there are like some questions responding on the uh, on the uh, uh, sensei's uh, sharing about uh, about the 1978 trip, and uh, I would like to have sensei uh, answer the question from uh, Miss Ira Adriati. Uh, which is quite interesting. And uh, what is Sensei's comment about Indonesian women artists as, uh, as far as you interact with Indonesian artists? Uh, so uh, Ms. Dinda probably can translate to Sensei. Sensei. もしもし、先生。はい、聞こえます。大丈夫ですか、先生。はい。はい。えっと、質疑に参りますが大丈夫ですね。はい。えっと、先生に対する質問はいくつかありますけれども、あの、一番目の質問は、先生はインドネシア
あの思いとかを教えていただけませんでしょうか。えー、あの1978年初めて、えー、インドネシアに行った時にはあまりあの女性のアウトアーティストを意識することはなかったですねあまり、えー、女性のアーティストに会うことがなかったので、えー、それほど意識していませんでしたでもその後あのえー、っとそうですねま,まずあの特に若い女性のアーティストが、えー、とても面白い作品を、えー、作ってあのラフマーヤニとか、えー、何人か女性の面白いアーティストもあの非常に印象に残るようになりましたし、えー、それから、えー、と遡って、まあ、近代美術史インドネシアの近代美術史を、まあ、調べると中にはエミリア・スナーサーのように、えー、女性のアーティストも作品を作っていた、えー、というようなことがあの分かってきて、えー、それはまあ徐々にあの私の、えー、関心の中に入ってきたという感じです。それの女性たちの名前をちょっと聞き取れなくて、もう一度教え、うん、あの教えていただけませんでしょうか。えっ、ー、とごゆっくりお話しください。若いあの女性のアーティストは、はいえー、アラフマ,マヤニラフ,ラフマ,マヤニ、うん、それと,、えー、と近代美術の近代美術史の中で、はいえーえー、見つけたアーティストはエミリア・スナーサエミリア・スワンズヌアンサスナーサスナンサ。うん、かな、はい。うん。はい。はい。など。はい。はい。when he first、uh, time came to Indonesia in 1978,、uh, he didn't meet a lot of、uh, women who are the artists, but he found that、uh, young women artists like, correct me if I'm wrong, Miss Arav Mayani or the contemporary art artists such as Emilia Sarasa had a really great artwork at the time.、Uh, the next question for Sensei is from Miss Grace Ambo.、Uh, Grace wrote、uh, Ushira Shoji san, your first trip was arranged through official state related institutions. Uh, especially on our side,、uh, IAA, ITB, ASRI. Do you think the fact influenced the kinds of art that you discovered at that time? Did you maintain r e l a t i o n s h i p through these channels for the shows after 1980, or did you further your research through the observation of the individuals that you met? Or generally speaking, how do you expand your research in the region? えっと、次の質問なんですけれども先生、はい、その頃にはあの IAA イテベアスリーなどとご協力になったということなんですね。はいはい、で質問は、えっと、それは美術には具体的に影響があるかどうかという話ですね。2番目はそれらの機関とかを、えー時間とかの関係を維持なさっていますか3番先生は、えー、と個人的な、えー、調査を行っていただいてでそういうみたいな研究をなさいましたか ?4 番先生は、えー、ご研究をどういうふうに、えー、拡大広,広げるつもりですかえっと最後の質問はあのどうやって広げてきたかっていうことですか今からこれから広げていくっていうことですか
uh, he wants to confirm the question number four. How do you expand your research in the region? It means that speaking current situation in current condition or in the I past? I think that along the way, uh, like after, after the exhibition in 1980, mm -hmm. and then how, how, how has Sensei been expanding uh, the research uh, uh, or developing the research mm -hmm. uh, in the hi. region afterwards uh, hi. until now? Uh, 1980年にに先生はまあいろいろやっていただいてそれ以外それ以来今の現代にかけて現在はどういうふうにご研究をなさいますかどういうふうに開発するのかという質問ですうんあのまずえっとちょっと4つの質問全部にうまく答えることができるかどうかわかりませんがあのまず最初の1978年のあのインドネシア訪問の時はともかくあのどうやって展覧会をややったらいいかあの何もわからなくてまあそういう公的な機関を頼ってあのともかく展覧会を作るということをまあ一番大事なこと優先的にあの考えましたそれでまああのオフィシャルなあのそういうオーガニゼーションとに協力してもらったわけですこれ最初の質問はいここで切りましょうかあはいお願い
1989, uh, the same year actually, I think, and is re has just published Shanghai Biennial 2000. So exhibitions are very important because exhibitions produce the framework by which artwork is done, right? Uh, sorry, artwork is understood, not necessarily done. So of course you could say it's a restraining force, but I think it is important to understand how the institution works, right? And without institution, there is no visibility. It's, it's sort of like the attacks on the biennials. The biennials, yes, may be a commodity forming sort of thing, but the, the biennial model has allowed representation of art from the region. So in a way, you, it has those problems, but do we really want to go back to the bad old days before 1980 and the Asian Artists Exhibition at Fukuoka when there's no representation? So exhibitions are very important. They, they spell out what you are and what, what it is. And of course, it can be misleading, it can be misleading. But I think our exhibitions are important in that, that regard. And also the other thing is that if you don't think about how exhibitions work in the region, in some ways we don't understand how what institutions are doing with countries, how they, and, and therefore, I think culture is not separate, obviously, from the larger, as the sort of argument for the new avant-garde in the region is not larger, for, separate from the larger forces that are going on. Yeah, yeah that, that's, that's my response, yeah. Thank you so much. There's another question from Ms. Gadis F. Putri. Uh, to Professor C.J. Wee, you, you briefly stated that modern art practices in the region is also shaped or influenced by both the technicality and materiality of traditional crafts. How far do you think that Western practices, i.e. European oil painting techniques introduced through colonialism and or early form of artistic trainings affect the trajectory of Southeast Asian idea of modernism and avant-garde works? Yeah, so this is a key sort of thing that um, Jim Supankat has been dealing with for many years, right? So the first thing is, do we, want to, <laughs> yes, do we want to otherize the modern? So basically, I think I, in general, the multi-modern position, which was uh, Dr. Yus, uh, the, 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 the keynote, um, uh, you still, Dr. Yustiono mentioned is I think something to think about. We don't have to think about the universal, but so the first thing is that of course these practices become part of what you are and they're problematic. Do they remain Dutch or Spanish forever? So obviously the case of Indonesia and uh, the Philippines may be special in Southeast Asia because of their longer history. So are those works foreign because uh, they're painted in a certain academic style? But secondly, even if you take it in those terms, yeah, there are problems, right? Because there are limits to that sort of modernist format and uh, what that what is, is can be staged through that. And it's why um, uh, Ushiro Shoji Sensei's Fourth Asian Art Show is so important because it helped push the notion that installation was a means by which the local comes in to play. It. And what the inst what installation by doing absorbing the local. Um, is can, can be local artisanal representations, local uh, cultural items means that the local is staged within what may have been some contemporary form with specific content that signifies the region. And the tension already is that um, Americans or whoever will look at this installation, it doesn't make any sense. Dadan Cristante or whoever it is doesn't make it, they don't make any sense because they're not doing contemporary installation in the way it's done in New York. Well, why should it? The point of this coordination is to link these materials in a contemporary setting, which uh, contemporary framework, which is what I think the fourth Asian art show is particularly important in achieving. So, if, so already by the mid nineties, people like Julie Ewington from Australia were saying, oh, you know, installation is the new thing in the entire region because installation allowed this sort of absorption of the local. This is why I think um, also, uh, Gita Kapoor's argument is very important because when you're dealing with Southeast Asia and South Asia, and I think significant that the APT clumps Southeast Asia and South Asia together, is that in part of problematic, there are living artisanal traditions, maybe framed by the market economy. But when you incorporate materiality from material items from a culture that is, still has the artisanal, you can make a claim for the reference to the everyday life. And we 
we compare this to Japan and Korea, where they have a longer history of the contemporary, a more established framework of the contemporary, there's a distinct difference, right? Because can Japanese art were, was seen to be contemporary in 1970 at the Tokyo Biennale, right? It was already at the moment when the contemporary apparently arrives in Japan. It's a very different history of Northeast Asia from Southeast Asia and, and, and South Asia, I think. So I think um, uh, in that sense, the modern and the contemporary as formats do make a difference to how cultural signification occurs. Uh, I would like to go back a bit to questions to Sensei. There is one from Mr. Diaz, Ramadian Shah. A question for Professor Ushiro Shoji Masahiro. Uh, is, cur <coughs> is curatorial practice nowadays uh, has experienced lots of changes uh, following the dynamics of the changes in the art world? If so, what kind of change that is most felt and needed for today's contemporary era? Okay,次の質問になります。はい。現代のキュレーターのあの世界の中で多くの変化がございますか。で、もしございましたら。どのようなものが一番感じられるのか、それで何が一番必要となりますか。うん。えっとまずあの情報が非常にあのたくさん増大したあの。私たち私の学院だった頃はやはりその情報がそんなに多くなくて今はやっぱりインターネットで情報がたくさんあることとそれからえっと実際にあのアジアのアーティストの作品をさまざまな展覧会で見ることができるようになったっていうことがあの大き
uh, some of his questions that were still directly uh, directed to Ushida Shoji Sensei. So after Professor Adrian in session one about the impossibility of uh, Indonesian art history, uh, Masahiro-san uh, addressed the same issue that is considered as impossible, as the second impossible. What is Indonesian art? And then he said, so how? Who's going to answer that very difficult question? Or maybe it's a wrongly placed question. So that, that, that's his, that's his uh, like first layer of the question. And then uh, he addressed uh, about uh, the, uh, he tried to address the relevance of the uh, presentation to the, the, the topic or the theme of this webinar about science uh, of art and aesthetics. Uh, so how to define aesthetics experience today? Aesthetic or art, art, the art experience in today's time. Is virtuality going to be a new, new aesthetic regime in to present time? So where, which one is more relevant between these two terms, artistic or aesthetic? Because both has been murdered by past regimes or uh, not previous knowledge production uh, before. Uh, Yes, that's somehow, if I can sum up uh, Masendro Yanto's comment. I think it's quite, a, actually it's quite a general uh, remark or comment. So I, uh, aside from Sensei, uh, I, I allow uh, Professor Wan Ling if you'd like to respond to these questions by Masendro. Thank you. はい、先生、次の質問でございます。はい。えっと、本当に難しければ、えっと、それは質問自体が間違いのかという話ですね。うん。えっと、あの、あ、そういうものはないと思います。いつもあの変わっているものだし、あの、それをま、インドネシアの、え、美術はこれだっていうふうに言ってしまうと、それは一つのあのステレオタイプに陥ってしまうと思います。これが一つの側面。はい。それからもう一つの側面は、はい。えっと、うんと、なんだった。えっと、あ、まあ、今の答えでよろしいですかね。あ、はい。あ、お伝えします。はい。Uh, first for the first question, uh, according to Professor Ushiro, there is no answer for Indonesian art. It's because one, Indonesian art is always changing. Number two, if we define this is Indonesian art, then we can become a stereotype. So that's why uh, his 
summary, as a conclusion, there is no answer for this difficult question. Okay. And then the next question, is it, is oh. it, is it okay? Uh, about the science and the aesthetic? Yeah, okay. 先生、次の質問ですが、大丈夫ですかはい。えっと、現代ではサイエンスとエセティックというのは、どういうふうに、なんていうかな、その経験として意識とか意味記述をすればいいんですか美術とか芸術というのはどこまで限られているのかなんかちょっと微妙なところがありますからサイエンスとかエステティックとかはどういうふうに限定されたほうがいいのかという質問ですそれはあの限定したり定義しても意味がないと思いますあのやっぱり アートは変わっていく動いていくものですしそれは私は区別する意味をあまり感じないです区別する意味を感じないはいわかりましたfor professor ushiro uh, he didn't feel the strict difference between the science and the aesthetic there is no limit between the two of them. That's for the question number two. It, and then the next one. And uh, next question is, in the opinion of virtual, do you think it's a new time? Why is it that it's a new time? この質問をした人にとって現代はアーティスティックとエステティックが両方ともまあいろいろもうなくされた状態になっているのでそうするとバーチャルはもうえっと具体的にもうあの新しい現代ということを定義できますかうんやはりあのリアリティということですよねあのどんどんそのリアリティが曖昧あの現実の世界が曖昧になってテクノロジーの進展によってやはりそのバーチャルな世界とリアルな世界が区別が非常につきにくくなってその境界が曖昧になってるのが現代だと思います Uh, for the question number three, uh, Sensen, Sensei uh, has an opinion that nowadays the reality becoming a little bit blur because the technology has been developing and the virtual and reality can be so difficult to be uh, different. Say. Professor Wan Ling, do you have anything to respond to Masendro's comments, if any? There are like the, there's still like some questions queuing for you to answer actually, but just in case. No, I, I, no, I don't. I do want to add I, one thing. I didn't really understand. I didn't really reply to the question about why not artwork very well just now. And uh, I want to say that studying artwork and looking at exhibitions are not really the same thing. And the Filipino art historian, Patrick Flores, is very clear that you keep them separate. So the, the context is very simple. I came back to Singapore in the 1990s and I was completely stunned at how much Southeast Asia had changed. Suddenly there's these exhibitions in Australia the Singapore Art Museum was opening up the big exhibition on Southeast Asian modern art, unprecedented things. Japan had stuck on in Southeast Asia. So the question is, why is this happening, right? Why the 90s? And it's taken a long time to attempt to answer it. And it was a 
very, very vital moment, this sudden dynamism, uh, artists moving all around the region, we, you know, we had uh, uh, Dada and Cristanto and all these people turning up in Singapore. Um, suddenly you saw the region in a way that wasn't possible in the 1980s. So this is a very dynamic moment of change that needed to, to take, that we need to take into account. And globalization is a very fraught problem. It's bad on one hand, but on the other hand, it's given us all this as well. It's made certain notions of circulation possible. Certainly we are just talking about, we know there's no such thing as Asia, but yet at the same time, these networks exist. So Asia may not be a real thing, but it has a real thing for a particular moment, it means something for a particular moment. And that, in that sense, that's what I'm trying to understand when I look at Asian art exhibitions of a certain time. Yeah. So it's not a matter of disrespecting artwork. <laughs> There is, okay, there, there, there are some uh, questions uh, uh, lined up uh, for Professor Wanling. So from Ms. Kanchana Mulan to Professor Wanling, I, it was mentioned that the traditional arts and such legacy were becoming politicized. It's undeniable that art and politics will certainly become intertwined, especially when it comes to a more international setting where many cultures from each countries will come into contact with each other through diplomatic relations. In which case, is there a method to preserve and cultivate the practice of traditional arts without it being instantly connected to a politically charged context, especially when, for example, a foreigner is looking to learn or practice the arts when it has particularly strict traditions, like being restricted to his own family or inherited skill set, etc., etc. Yeah, that's um, very complicated question. So to begin with these exhibitions and the thinking about traditional art was to get it out of the, the ghetto that traditional art is the work of traditional societies of societies which are not modern. So in that sense, traditional art is already placed in the past. So that's, that's a problem. At the same time, because traditional art is the, the practice of living people, and especially there are strong traditions in India, particularly, but also you know, Indonesia, places like that, where traditional art has a particular signification. So I think Jim Supankar would argue that there's nothing inevitably, inevitably political about all contemporary work. All contemporary work is not about uh, uh, weaponizing tradition as uh, as a as, as a version of contemporary art is pushing back against the political, he would say some of this is simply an ability to talk about the contemporary moment in which contemporary uh, tr contemporary and traditional become one thing. Then it identifies identify identity sort of a statement as to who we are. But certainly many critics like. Uh, Curators like David Elliott would say, of course, then artists also have the privilege of using daily life to push back against oppression by states. So obviously different artists do different things. But then this, that's, so that's one set of questions. The next set of questions is then, okay, so what, what is the artisanal artist and how, does they, how do they get represented in the current art system? And I think it's fair enough to say that the current art system is not particularly interested in traditional art in that sense. But partly because of the old problem that traditional art always ends up in an ethnographic museum, a sign of your societies having great traditions and therefore your society of the past. So the tension about the past and present, I think, hasn't really gone away. Gita Kapoor is very interesting because her question is, can we therefore take living artisanal tradition and make that a signifier of the contemporary. I don't actually know how you do that, but it's a very interesting idea on her part. Yeah. So I'm afraid that it's, oh. I don't have a straightforward answer to that. Yeah. It's, okay. it's okay. There's also another question by Ms. Kayla, Kayla Kai uh, to Professor Wanling. 
Uh, to what in extent is the impact of art as a commodity in the Asian contemporary art, considering the cultural and historical backgrounds of the movement? Will it reduce the value of the culture or history when it is commercialized? It's an Again, another, question. <laughs> another old, very difficult <laughs> question. Um, <laughs> Entering the um, museum system allows representation. So in a sense, it circulates around the world because it plugs into a museum system, uh, you know, such as the uh, uh, Mori Art Museum in Tokyo or the Singapore Art Museum or the National Gallery in Singapore. So that's, that's important, you get, um, you get representation. But then the cost of that, so to speak, is also commodification. And commodification is a problem because, in fact, it stops new artwork sometimes because collectors want version of the same things, right? In fact, museums want versions of the same things somehow. So again, it's not an easy question to answer because if you if circulation has that cost, right? And the museum itself has changed, as we know. The museum used to be sort of empty places. Now it's a sort of spectacular place, sort of fashion place. It's not exactly a pop concert, but closer to it than it was 50 years ago. Is this good? Is it bad? Probably a bit of both. It means other people get to see it. Universities, uh, museums are forced to have education programs. Um, so school children get to learn about art. But at the same time, because of the money involved, the commodification is there as well. Again, I'm not so sure that it's easily resolved. Do we want to go back to a point where we don't have museums uh, and art, contemporary art galleries? This is this is Jim Supankat's point, right? That a lot of contemporary Indonesian artists welcome museums because it meant exposure, education, people could understand what contemporary art is. Can you have contemporary art? old question without the museum or the art gallery. Yeah. So I don't okay. know that I can do uh, We have around like 11 minutes left for this session. Uh, I have one more uh, question for Sensei. Uh, and then afterwards, I will have like a bit of a comment and also a question for both professors uh, to as a conclusion of the of the session of the session. Uh, last last question for uh, Sensei is from Pak Dik Dik Saidi Kumula, uh, an old friend. Uh, so question for uh, Ushira Shoji Sensei. So in 1978, uh, when you first met the Indonesian artists in several in several places. Uh, what kind of Indonesian art that was expected or hoped for by the Indonesian art at that time? で現代美術に関するあの、情報が何もなかったので、え、インドネシアに行くまでは何もあの、ま、
あのそ,その時は期待、えー、できるようなこう,こ,うこういうものっていうことが全くなかったのが実情です。あえっと少しあの繰り返しお伺いしたいんですけれども、うん、それらのインドネシアの美術家たちの期待インドネシアの美術に対する期待は何かもしご存知であれば教えていただきたいと思います。えっと私が何を期待したかではなくてではなくてあのその時に先生,先生がお出会いになったインドネシアの美術家たちの期待、うん、インドネシアの美術家はこういうふうにすればいいのかとか、うん、そういうみたいな期待が知りたくと思います。インドネシアのアーティストたちはあのやはり、えー、国際的な発表の場をあのとても求めていてあの私たちの展覧計画している展覧会に出品できるということをすごく喜んでいました。あはい、okay. Okay. Uh, when he was... In Indonesia in 1978, he had uh, the, the impression that Indonesian artists at that time were so delighted, were so happy to have the opportunity to exhibit their、uh, artworks in the international events. That, that's what he felt about、uh, the impression or Indonesian、uh, expectation, Indonesian artist expectation. So basically, like what they hoped at that time is the like international recognition of Indonesian modern or like contemporary, contemporary art at the time. Okay. Okay. それとあのやはり他のアジアの国の,あの現代美術をと一緒に並,ぶ並べられること、うん、一緒に見てもらえるっていうことを期待していたようでした。Yes,、uh, that's exactly the point. And plus,、uh, they were expecting that they can be, they can be、um, together with the other contemporary arts from other Asian countries. Thank you, Sensei.、Uh, okay, we're,、uh, we're close enough to the end of the session.、Um, uh, as for me, I mean, I can on the contrary to Mas Kendoliando, I don't think that the whole uh, uh, reflections or revisit that have been、uh, shared by the two professors are merely a nostalgic.、Uh, Uh, trip back to time,、uh, but is act, they, they both represent like two very pivotal points、uh, in, especially in the history of Indonesian modern and contemporary art, is when, like the late、uh, 1970s or 1978, and also the Asian art show, uh, uh, which, which uh, Sensei uh, was one of the first persons that actually. Try to do some kind of like a thorough reading of, uh, of uh, Indonesian modern art,、uh, the scene at that time. And actually, like it, it, it opened the door, like the, 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 early,、uh, the early sign or the early、uh, entrance of Indonesian art、uh, to enter the, the global、uh, map, and especially like the Asia Pacific,、uh, which then Continued in the 1990s, especially with the、uh, seminal exhibitions at that time,、uh, like the Tradition and Tensions and also the Fort Asian Art Show, like what、uh, Professor Wan Ling has,、uh, has proven、uh, with, the, with his reading、uh, of, the, uh, of the exhibitions that、um, like, uh, opened, the, uh, opened the way for. for Uh, Indonesian contemporary art practice. Uh, uh, and somehow,、uh, as we move forward to the 21st century、uh, and 
see how uh, global art itself has developed and how Indonesian contemporary art itself has uh, defined itself, even though uh, still in a way, not really in an absolute uh, definition of what, what is Indonesian contemporary art, but it has claimed its place. Uh, so my question to both professors, uh, uh, going uh, go back or addressing, readdressing the, the theme or the topic of this webinar uh, is about Indonesian and visual, is Indonesian art and visual culture in the 21st century. And we are like now moving uh, moving to moving forward or moving on uh, with the second decade of the millennium, actually, like second decade of the 21st century. Uh, and especially like now with the current condition that we are now facing with this pandemic and, and like there's new challenges in, in the contemporary art scene globally. So what's your take uh, of what's going to happen to uh, Indonesian or Asian art scene in the near, near future as we move on to the second decade of this millennium. Um, maybe I can uh, let Professor, uh, sorry, sorry, Sensei first. えっと、あの、インドネシアのこの え、に、あの、可能性を一番感じています。ただ、ただ、ただ、明確に未来のことはわからないですね。で、で、それはインドネシアなんですね。アジア、だったら、アジア全体。アジア全体。はい、わかりました。あ、オッケー。Okay. Indonesian art uh, will have the big possibility to have the connection with the community in Jatiwangi. He ever visited Jatiwangi, Indonesia, and he felt that in the nearer future, Indonesian art will have a, some, some, something related with that. And speaking about the Asia, uh, because of the pandemic, there is uh, there is 
very uh, very how, how do i say it it's very difficult to to imagine and to define the condition because it's a special situation in uh, in short in in now for for the time being because of the pandemic we cannot uh, predict what's going to happen in the near future for the art even in the, either in indonesia or in asia because of this okay thank you sensei uh, professor wang ling <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Christopher I'll borrow Bozzi. your words for the concluding, for the conclusion. <laughs> the ball reading is very hard, I think. Um, <laughs> in some ways, in terms of Southeast Asia, I think clearly Filipino art, Thai art, and Indonesian art are the uh, most prominent. That's, that'd be my feeling. Maybe <laughs> Thai art slightly higher, just in terms of global recognition. So I don't think will go back to the past. But then um, I suppose, okay, the pandemic aside, because I, this may slow everything down, right? But what does it mean then, let's say Joan Key, the art historian Joan Keys, right? We don't need Asian contemporary art, contemporary Asian art anymore. Are we really sure that our artists from Southeast Asia at least have entered global art as a, as a concept? We know mainland Chinese people have. Right, mainly Chinese artists have, have we? And then we enter global art. How do we understand the reconfigured national within this, right? So I'm not sure that's something we really understand, but you can see from what the Korean curators have said that once you enter globality, glo the global stage in a certain way, you reconceive what it means to represent the nation out there. So that's not entirely very clear to me. Second, I think in the metropolitan West, it's still not very clear what Asia means. So there's all just this weird misrecognition that, you know, on one hand, everyone knows China is rich, powerful, and maybe dangerous because even the Europeans are more careful about China these days. But what is the sort of modernity that we represent over there? I think for us, it's not a problem that in some ways, clearly all of the region is modern in the aspiration, the desire, et cetera, et cetera. So that's not an issue for us, but what does it mean? Is that, is that really understood? Has globalization done its job, the positive aspects? And then finally, what does it mean now that globalization is shutting down, right? I mean, we have benefited from the global, the pro problematic as it is to have culture circulating as a commodity. Honestly, we have benefited from it, right? So we've benefited from many levels, not just art, but even pop culture, that something like the Korean boy band BTS can now be doing well. The US is part of the largest sphere of art and culture that we, that visual art is also part of, I think. But what does it mean? Does it mean that BTS has arrived as a global pop group? We'll have to see, we don't know. And then the region is changing, right? Because Finally, history as a problem hasn't gone away. What used to be a Northeast Asian notion of history, problem, Japan becoming modern, the factory of China, the, the Japanese imperial past, that has now come down as a historical problem into our region with China's nine dashed line and you know, clashes with Indonesian uh, Coast Guard and Malaysian Coast Guard is not very far away, <laughs> literally it's close by. What does that mean? when globalization is entering into this what, what phase, we don't really know with China wanting to be powerful, what will that do to art institutions and the circulation of art in our region? How will we understand it? How will M plus in Hong Kong play out with Hong Kong becoming closer to China? So I think these are real institutional questions for how museums stage what they have as well. So I think that we, we are, it's very rare to know that we're in a moment of transition, but I think we are. We are truly in a moment of transition. It's only a big question. Right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Professor, and also to Sensei. Uh, it's already been like the time is very pressing. Actually, we're a bit, wee bit over time, uh, but uh, I would like to. Uh, again, uh, thank you uh, both of our very distinguished professor who has shared with us, uh, given us the privilege uh, of their uh, reflections and also 
uh, some uh, of their own uh, eyewitness uh, encounter uh, of or what was what was really uh, important in our uh, Indonesian art history, uh, and also to Miss Dinda uh, Rana Direksa with with her brilliant translation of Sensei's. Uh, I would like to thank all the questioners uh, with their amazing questions, and uh, also to uh, from me to Itebe, uh, who has given uh, given me and every, uh, all of us the opportunity opportunity. Uh, for this uh, very privileged moment. Uh, I give back to MC. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. and our distinguished guests for the uh, we're all ladies and gentlemen we almost got to the end of this uh, conference for the closing of this conference let me welcome our let me welcome back our head of com committee mr patriot mukmin to give the closing remark please welcome mr patriot mukmin The International Conference on Aesthetics and the Sciences of Art, ACR, has been successfully conducted. I would like to express my gratitude to everyone who has contributed to this seminar. Professor Raini Wirahadi Kusuma, Rector of Bandung Institute of Technology. Dr. Arik Kusmara, Dean of Faculty of Art and Design. Dr. Irma Damayanti, Head of Aesthetics and the Sciences of Art Research Group. All honorable speakers and moderators, Dr. Yustiono, Professor Adrian Vickers, Professor Ushiro Soji Masahiro, Professor CJ Wanlingwi, Dr. Agung Hujatnika, 
Ms. Farah Wardani, Ms. Dindarana Direksa PhD for giving world class translations and Ms. Itris Irtisela Marhadi as master of ceremony. Furthermore, I would like to express my appreciation to all writers, scholars, and audience who have participated in this online international conference. Also, I would like to extend my kind gratitude to all the members of the committee and reviewers who have worked so hard to make this happen. This whole series of events are conducted with support from the 2020 Research Community Service and Innovation Programs P3MI ITB, Sarana Prasana Faculty of Art and Design, and Cultural Hub ITB. Lastly, on behalf of the committee, I apologize for any mishaps that might have happened during the conference. I hope everyone can benefit from this event. Thank you very much for your participation. Goodbye. Thank you very much for our head of committee, Mr. Patriot Pukmin. Biggest appreciation for the participants and also the members of the committee. Good afternoon and farewell. <laughs>